It's another perfect night for football in the Southeastern Conference. And here in South Carolina, they've developed the perfect tailgating vehicle, the Cockaboose Railroad. 22 cabooses lined up on a track just outside of williams Bryce Stadium with all the comforts of home and then some. Those fortunate fans will be part of a sellout crowd here in Columbia to see the 13th ranked Tigers of LSU at 4-1 take on the 5-2 South Carolina Gamecocks. Watching ESPN College Football Primetime presented by Hampton Hotels. Good evening, everybody. Mike Patrick along with Todd Blackledge. It's great to have you with us. LSU lost for the first time last week, big time, by 30 at Florida. And tonight, Todd, they'll try to show that that was just one week and not an indication of how good they really are. Well, the good news for LSU fans is, under Les Miles, the Tigers are 6-0 and after a defeat, but this is not the same team that won the national championship last year. Offensively, they're still growing with a redshirt freshman quarterback, Jarrett Lee, who will make his third start tonight. Yeah. And defensively, they just haven't come up with the same number of big plays as the team did a year ago. But I think the loss can be positive for LSU because it forced them to go back and focus on fundamentals and techniques. I expect LSU to play play well tonight. Now South Carolina is 5 and 2 overcoming a slow start and maybe just maybe Steve Spurrier has finally found that quarterback that he wants. Well, with Steve Spurrier, never exactly sure what being a starting quarterback means, but the guy who will get the ball first tonight, Steven Garcia, everybody around here is excited to see. He came in late in the game last week against Kentucky and played extremely well. And when Steve Spurrier talks about this guy, there's a little glimmer of hope in his eyes because he has a great arm and the athleticism to make plays with his feet when the play breaks down. Without decades-old traditions to fall back on, former coach Joe Morrison started a new one in the early 80s using the theme music from the movie 2001 A Space Odyssey to fire up the crowd, and they've used it ever since. And now it's time for Carolina football. It's LSU in South Carolina. Kickoff is next. ESPN's College Football Primetime. Won't you buy Papa John's? Order by text message or online at papajohns.com. And Chase Freedom. Introducing rewards points you can use like cash. Visit chase.com slash freedom. Introducing Wendy's new Pretzel Bacon Pub Cheeseburger. Nothing will distract you from the pretzel bun and beer cheese. Not even all the comments on the pic you posted of your Pretzel Bacon Pub Cheeseburger. Download the app to order ahead and get Wendy's rewards. Let's remember this time where none of us felt secure and fight for a future where everyone can. Because when the world seems like it's standing still, that's the perfect time for us to change it. 
You know how these things start. You try Wendy's buy one, get one $4 breakfast offer. Love it and tell a friend. Then they tell a friend. And so on and so on and so on. So get to Wendy's and get some breakfast. Buy three participating items and save $20 at fanatics.com. See wearetilgatenation.com for details. Hey, what's up, you guys? I'm Darius Rucker. Some of y'all might know me from my new country record, or I know a lot of y'all might know me from Hootie and the Blowfish. But what I'm here to talk about today is the mighty, mighty Gamecocks. I got a message for Les Miles and everybody at LSU. It's time for us to start getting respect. And today is the day it starts. Go Gamecocks. Beat LSU. Oh, what a great run of hits they had with Hootie and the Blowfish. Coming up on our show tonight, we'll tell you about the man on the LSU sidelines who is helping power the Phillies run to the World Series. Also, think you all know everything about Steve Spurrier? We'll find out when we play Do You Know? And Taste of the Town goes upscale. Todd actually used a silverware and a cloth napkin this week. We'll see why. Had some good eats. South Carolina won the toss, deferred to the second half, so LSU gets it first. Ryan Suckup will kick to Keelan Williams and Trendon Holiday. And Holiday a blazer. I talked to Ray Richleski, the special teams coach for South Carolina. He said, we're going to kick off to Holiday because we think Suckup can kick the ball out of the end zone. When it comes to punting, a little different story. He's had 14 out of 36 kickoffs have been touchbacks. He has an NFL leg. Holiday two yards deep. Keelan Williams says keep it there. So they'll start from the 20. Let's check in with Holly Rowe. So guys, last week at the Swamp, the young quarterback for LSU, Jarrett Lee, had some troubles communicating with his offensive line. It caused some confusion in the running game. So this week at practice, they piped in the usual crowd noise, but they forced the offensive line not to help him. They wanted him to be responsible for getting the signal, the audible, to the entire offense. We even may see it a little bit more. No huddle like we're seeing right now, so he can just run to the line, have plenty of time to make those adjustments, so there's no confusion tonight. All right, Holly, thanks very much. You can check out the starting lineups at the top of your screen. Scott gets the first carry and powers his way up to the 29-yard line against one of the top-rated defenses in the country. This South Carolina group has been sensational. Well, they really have, and that's a very positive sign for LSU and for Charles Scott because he had a struggle last week against Florida. 12 carries, only 35 yards. And that's a good first run for him. Had a streak of four 100-yard games in a row. They go out quickly to Brandon LaFell, their leading receiver. And LaFell crosses the 30 and has a first down. South Carolina defense uh, a little different in the way they line up. Four down linemen and then two linebackers and uh, five defensive backs. Or three linebackers, five defensive backs. So they play the spread formations with just their normal defensive personnel. Chris Mitchell, number 86, is in there as a third wide receiver. Here's Scott, and obviously they want to establish him early after those troubles last week. Brought down by one of the two big inside linebackers, Eric Norwood. He goes 253. Jasper Brinkley, the middle linebacker, is 269 this is a very physical defense, and especially those two guys. Norwood was a defensive end the last two years, and in Ellis Johnson's new scheme, they moved him to an outside linebacker, but a very physical presence. Out of the eye on second and six, play fake. Lee in rhythm, but he missed Brandon LaFell. And Chris Culliver had the coverage. One of the things LSU really hoped for tonight was that Jarrett Lee would get off to a fast start on the road. And in, uh, in Auburn, he got off to a slow start, played well in the second half and a win. Last week at Florida, a very slow start for the entire offense. And then he settled down and played well, but the game was pretty much out of reach before he got comfortable. They need for him to get off to a good start tonight offensively. South Carolina second in the country in pass defense third in the country in total defense. Big third down here. 
They come with a blitz. They don't get there. And Lee throws a really good pass, but LaFell couldn't hold it. South Carolina trying to turn up the heat on defense. Well, certainly what South Carolina wants to do is put the game in Jarrett Lee's hands. If they can neutralize the running game like Florida did last weekend, put it in the young quarterback's hands, that would play right into the favor of the South Carolina defense. Captain Munderland, who had a huge game a week ago, and Brad Dolphrey, wearing number 30, is in. He's a left footer. The only way you can tell the difference between these guys, they have two putters. They will exchange numbers, 30 and 38. One of them is a left footer, one of them is a right footer. It's a 35-yard kick returned by Munderland for 18 yards. And Stephen Garcia, who had, as we have a player down, Kirsten Pittman, number 49, appears to be the injured player, and he is being tended to by the LSU training staff. Now, they have two number 49s. T-Bob Bear is the other one when he checks in as a blocking back. I think that's who that is right there. And he is the son of Bobby A. Bear. You remember him as uh, the outstanding NFL quarterback. And this is uh, his son, a freshman from Norcross, June, uh, Norcross, Georgia. Fortunately, he is up, but not able to put any weight on that left leg. And now walking a little bit better. That's good to see. And I know Bobby, I'm sure he's watching this game, very concerned about his son. Looks like he'll be fine now. And there is Steven Garcia making the first start of his career. He's out of Tampa, Florida. Very highly recruited. A big arm kid. Very mobile. Tremendous potential. And the one problem he has had so far because he has missed so much practice especially in the spring because of off-field incidents. He just doesn't have very much practice time and very much game time to go by. Now Garcia breaks out of the pocket. This is the dimension he can give you, and obviously he has some skill in this department. Picks up 12 and a first down. Of course, he missed spring practice the first year, arrested for drunkenness, suspended for three days by the coach. Arrested for vandalism, and that had to do with the professor's car. That was the most serious of any of these charges. Reinstated for the 2007 season where he redshirted. Underage drinking again, and missed spring practice this year. So he needs to really show that he has matured and developed and is ready to take the helm of this ball club. If you can't be counted on, you can't be the starting quarterback. Well, that's absolutely right. I, there, there's no question that Steve Spurrier is excited about this guy. He kept saying to us, you know, he gives us hope. He gives us some hope with his arm, with his feet, with his ability. But you almost have to hold your breath a little bit with him as well because he has to prove that he is accountable and he has to prove that he is capable of taking on this mantle of being a starting quarterback on an SEC program like South Carolina. And that's, that's what we're all waiting to see. Chris Smelly had been starting, a blitz coming. And he throws it behind his intended receiver, Jason Barnes, who got a hand on it but couldn't hold it. But Smelly has been very, very inconsistent. Ten touchdown passes as opposed to nine interceptions so far. And when Garcia came off the bench last week and had an excellent quarter and a half to lead them to a come-from-behind win, Steve Spurrier thought that this was the time to give him the start. Well, again, Steve has done a lot of different things with his quarterbacks through the years. I mean, you're never really settled <laughs> in as a starting quarterback with him unless you play well. And, and all you know is that you've got the first snap tonight. That's what Garcia knows. Third and ten. Garcia certainly may have wanted to take off a little early that time. Didn't have the chance because Tyson Jackson was right there to get the sack three and a half for Jackson this year. 
Well, here comes Jackson. A little inside-outside stunt. He beats his man to the inside. And for LSU, that is what they've lacked defensively. Big play. That's only the 10th sack of the season so far for LSU. At this point last year, they already had had 18 sacks. Spencer landing the punt. Chad Jones is deep. They like to put Jones back here in situations where they want to make sure he either catches the punt or lets it go. They want the sure hands back there. 48-yard kick and no return. Tonight's the night for delicious tortilla balls with flat bottoms. Easy to fill, easy to eat. Only from Old El Paso. This football season, buy three participating items and save $20 off Fanatics gear at wearetogenation.com. At Emirates, we are proud that our promise is to provide a better flying experience to all our customers. But today, fly better does not just mean showers and bars above the clouds, as well as wonderful in-flight service. As routes slowly open up and our fleet takes to the skies again, our number one priority is the safety of both our customers and staff. And to make sure that every precaution is taken when we fly you back to your loved ones or on your well-deserved vacation. Fly Emirates, fly better. You took me in and you wrapped your arms around me for days. After being a part of millions of love stories. <laughs> at K. This telecast is available in high definition. Brought to you by Pioneer's new Kuro. Welcome back to Columbia, South Carolina. LSU with its second possession. Start to its own 20. Scott, nothing. Check in with Reese Davis. Reese. Reese, thanks very much. Reese will keep us up to date on everything throughout the night. Garrett Lee changing the play. Great back to throw. Four man rush. And LaFell makes the catch up at the 32. They indicate it was a good catch off the shoot up. Nice safe pass. You got maximum protection. Both backs are in. So that means you've got seven guys blocking for your quarterback off the play fake. Ball's a little bit low, but LaFell does a nice job of coming back to the quarterback to make sure he gets his arms underneath the football. And it had to be there too, Todd, because Captain Munnerlin was right there on defense. Out of the eye this time. Scott again. Flag is down. And Scott upended at the 37-yard line. Well, already, regardless of what this penalty is, already LSU is off to a much better start than a week ago. I mean, they, they gave up a touchdown on the third play of the game to Florida, and in the first quarter they were outgained 186 to 4. Illegal formation. Six men on the line of scrimmage against the offense. Five yard penalty remains first down. LSU, a lot of talent on the football team. Charles Scott, their leading rusher, averaging 114 yards a game. Hope for a big one tonight. Their leading receiver is the guy who just made that catch two plays ago, Brandon LaFell. 29 catches, make that 30 now in the year. And probably the second favorite target for Jarrett Lee is inside the tight end, Richard Dixon, a junior out of Ocean Springs, Mississippi. Penalty backs them up five. Little swing to the outside. Richard Murphy, who's got some speed over there, makes the catch before he is driven back. Well, this was last week. The third play for Florida. It was actually a play where Danny McCrary was in position, got a hand on the football, but there was no safety help over the top. It was a blown coverage. And just like that, Florida had a 7 to nothing lead. And Les Miles told us last night at their hotel it was 17 to nothing before they even could take a breath. And they were out of that game quickly. Murphy dancing his way through traffic up to the 45-yard line. 
You talk about going back to, to focus on fundamentals and techniques. The, the offensive line last week, that was an embarrassing game for them. They, that was supposed to be the strength of this LSU offense, and they really took it to heart. And already you can see a much better effort and much better cohesiveness by that front four. Five. Lee, three-man rush, dropped eight and throws it away. Holly Rowe, what do you have? Well, last week against Florida, as you mentioned, Charles Scott had just 35 yards rushing. Obviously, the offensive line was embarrassed, but they really took accountability. Their tight end, Richard Dixon, said, you know, the leaders on this team aren't going to let this offense go away like that again. They had an extra meeting this week. The guys got together. The seniors got together. And you can already see just how much more determined and effective they've been in this game. All right, Holly. Andrew Hatch has checked in a quarterback. Trendon Holiday, the man in motion. They want to get him the ball. Holiday with a blinding speed, close to a first down at the 45-yard line. And Murphy, the backup running back, was leading the way and gave him a block. Well, I think getting the, the ball in the hands of Trendon Holiday is very important for LSU. Coming into the game tonight, he only had nine offensive touches. But when he touches the football, good things usually happen. You, they want to try to protect him because he's not very big at five foot five, 165 pounds, but he has tremendous speed and a guy who can take a play and the whole distance anytime he touches it. Won the 55 meters in high school, the national championship. Hatch under pressure. Gets to the 40 and got out of bounds. Good play by Hatch, who was the starter in the Auburn game we did until he had his bell rung in the first half. And he's really made a, a twisted route to Baton Rouge. Actually went to Harvard, didn't play because he was on a mission. So it was, uh, it, it was a very difficult way for him to get to LSU, but he has found a lot of playing time here. Well, especially in running quarterback situations. A better runner than Jarrett Lee. Jarrett Lee, the better thrower, hats the better runner. Lee is back in. Wants a screen. Bird. Nice move to get an extra five yards down to the 28. Demetrius Bird. Preseason second team SEC wide receiver. And they're doing a great job against a really good defense. Yeah, they are. Well, they're mixing them up. They're running. They're throwing quick. Demetrius Bird making guys miss in a small space. That's quick feet by Demetrius Bird. LSU trying to play at a real up-tempo pace as well. Well, Holly mentioned that. One of the things they're doing, they're trying to go no huddle to take a little of the decision-making and the communication problem away from the quarterback. And in that case, South Carolina, not ready defensively, had to use one of their timeouts to make sure they were set. Let's remember this time where none of us felt secure and fight for a future where everyone can. Because when the world seems like it's standing still, that's the perfect time for us to change it. Tonight's the night for delicious tortilla balls with flat bottoms. Easy to fill, easy to eat. Only from Old El Paso. This football season, buy three participating items and save $20 off Fanatics gear at wearetogatenation.com. At Emirates, we are proud that our promise is to provide a better flying experience to all our customers. But today, fly better does not just mean showers and bars above the clouds, as well as wonderful in-flight service. As routes slowly open up and our fleet takes to the skies again, our number one priority is the safety of both our customers and staff. And to make sure that every precaution is taken when we fly you back to your loved ones or on your well-deserved vacation. Fly Emirates, fly better. ESPN's College Football Primetime is presented by Hampton Hotels. At Hampton, we love having you here. And Hummer, like nothing else. LSU driving in a scoreless game here in Columbia, South Carolina. Hatch is back in at quarterback. So is Trendon Holliday. This is the package they're probably going to use both of them. Let's go to Reese Davis. Reese. <laughs> the pick 
pick six is a killer. Good defensive play by South Carolina. That'll be negative yards. And Todd, you talked early about the rhythm LSU wants to play in. Why is that easier for a quarterback? Well, the reason it's easier is because if you go without a huddle and you don't substitute, now this time they're substituting, it forces a defense to just kind of line up and show their hand and play. And there's not as much cat and mouse, there's not as much necessity to audible at the line of scrimmage because the defense has to line up and expect a quick count or a hurry up tempo. And so that takes the pressure off the quarterback by doing that. Lee comes back in on third and 13. All out blitz coming. Lee had to rush it because of the blitz and that's nowhere near a first down. The pass underneath. When you gotta like Ellis Johnson, the new defensive coordinator, he's put together quite a unit. Yeah, well he's bringing some pressure from the outside and it's gonna force Jarrett Lee to kind of drift a little bit. Here comes the pressure. He drifts to the right of the pocket and then doesn't get a whole lot on that throw. And by the time it's corralled, the defense is there to stop it well short of a first down. That was a good defensive stand in their own territory. Colt David will try from 48 yards. And right down the pipe. LSU takes a 3-0 lead. And when we come back, we'll tell you about the man on the LSU sidelines who's helping power the Phillies run. You did this and this for less with store-wide Labor Day savings and free delivery. The Home Depot is making doing even more affordable. So the only question now is what could you do next? The Home Depot, how doers get more done. No one knows where it comes from. It's the fighting spirit. Ready to fight whatever shape the battle takes. As long as there are battles, there will always be Marines. high-powered offense against Matt Castle, Randy Moss and the New England Patriots. Monday Night Football on ESPN at 8.30. Coverage begins at 7 Eastern with Monday Night Countdown delivered by UPS. LSU with a 3-0 lead. It's a kickoff to Captain Munnerlin, who had one return, his first of the year last week for 84 yards. You might imagine that's why he's back in there this week. Turnable from the 17 yard line. Whoa. Wow. <laughs> Didn't have much room to get a return after he caught that ball. Let's check in with Holly. Well, guys, I'm down here with a pretty special bat. This is a bat used by Ryan Howard of the Phillies. It's from the Marucci Bat Company. Surprisingly enough, in his day job, Jack Marucci is the head athletic trainer for LSU. He supervises 20 different varsity sports. But on the side, he started making bats by hand for his seven-year-old son, Gino. It kind of took off, and now he has 60 major leaguers that use these handmade bone-rubbed bats. They actually use maple and ash from natural-grown trees in Pennsylvania. They use the same style that Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig use, and they rub them with a bone from a cow's femur to help seal the wood and harden it. Guys, it's working out pretty good because the Phillies, about six of the guys on that team use these bats, and uh, you might have heard they're going to the World Series. Holly, that's pretty good publicity, yeah. isn't it, when uh, one of your main clients is doing that well? And, of course, Ash, there is such a controversy in Major League Baseball now over maple bats and the way they shatter. Yeah, He'll keep this one on the ground to Davis, and Mike picks up a couple. I'll tell you what, those bats are really beautiful, too, because uh, Jack made four of those for my boys. The Blackledge boys each have their own autograph model of the uh, Marucci bats. They all chose different styles and colors, but uh, really a great piece of workmanship. And the South Carolina player is down. Jamon Meredith, number 77, who was the starting left guard, a senior 6'5", 297. 
gets up slowly. Probably the most experienced of their offensive linemen up there. Kind of trying to walk off on his own power. And early in the year, Steve Spurrier was really upset with that offensive line. He says, you can have quarterbacks, wide receivers, running backs, all the greatest plays in the world drawn up. If you can't block anybody, you can't use any of them. Yeah, that, that's kind of been a problem, I think, for him here. I mean, the, the offensive line in his time here has not been particularly strong. And then he hasn't really had the kind of quarterback that he was accustomed to having at Florida. That's why everybody's wondering if Steven Garcia is going to be the guy. But even if he is, he better have guys blocking for him in front, especially against a defensive front like the LSU Tigers. Third and one, we have a red zone alert for you for Boston College and Virginia Tech. And on second effort, it looked like Garcia got very, very close to that yellow line, which would indicate a first down. And now they're not even going to measure it. They've got it. Well, it's interesting because Steven Garcia, even though this is only his first start, coming into the game tonight, he was the second leading rusher on the football team behind starting tailback Mike Davis. I mean, he is a mobile guy. And has the ability to Jeez. make some people miss. Another player down. That's Drake Nevis, a backup tackle. And you got the feeling talking to the coaches this week that uh, they thought the most physical team was going to win this yeah. game. It was pretty obvious they thought this would be a smash-mouth ball game. And we're seeing people dropping early. On well, LSU already with a little bit of a depth issue at the defensive tackle. Ricky Jean Francois. Out for the second game in a row. Did not play last week in Gainesville. Has a groin injury. He is still home in Baton Rouge. And Drake Nevis was uh, the guy that was playing in his place. Charles Alexander, the other starting tackle, is a guy who is playing but can't play a whole game because of lingering aches and pains from a, a knee surgery a year ago. And Marlon Favorite is the other guy they expect in that rotation. So they are getting very thin inside. Garcia from the gun, steps up under pressure, and picks up about a yard. Let's go back to Reese. Penn State certainly made it interesting for a while, yeah, didn't they? Yeah, they did. Well, Michigan made it interesting for a yeah. while. <laughs> and, uh, Penn State came on the second half. LSU shows blitz. Blocked really well by South Carolina. This throw to the sideline. What a catch down at the 47. Kenny McKinley, who will one of these days, very soon, own all of Sterling Sharks receiving records here. A nice job moving the pocket, and Kenny McKinley, who missed earlier games with a hamstring injury, does a great job of going up and catching this ball high. The ball was actually thrown a little bit late and a little bit short, but McKinley made up for it by jumping over the defenders to make the catch. He just snatched the ball out of the air. Gain of 18 for the former high school quarterback. They have advanced it to the LSU 46. Garcia to Davis. Takes it to the left side. Check it. That's Eric Baker. He coughed up the football. And LSU has it. Well, he, he can't get up off the ground like that. I, I thought he was on the ground when he had the football. Coleman, the safety, knocked it loose. Eric Baker is a young freshman out of Jacksonville, Florida, that they wanted to get in the game. It's clearly a fumble. He's hit, and the ball is out. I just thought right there he was down when he picked up the well, football. Coleman is. Then he fumbled it and picked it up again. Yep. So if he had possession when he was down, it's down. Again, a big play for the LSU defense. Coming into the game tonight, this LSU defense had only forced four takeaways, one fumble and three interceptions. Tied for fewest in, in all of college football. And uh, that is a big play that this defensive lack. And all of a sudden now, LSU with excellent field position again. Eric Baker has some speed. They wanted to see him get some more action. But not if he's going to cough up the football. That will not endear him 
to Steve Spurrier. He took a shot on that fumble, too. I mean, I think he's a little cloudy right now sitting over there on the bench. Now, I believe they're going to review this. And what it will come back to is that there was possession, but the recovering player was down, then got up and fumbled it again. That was really a good defensive play by Harry Coleman. First of all, he maintained outside leverage on the play. He, he forced the guy back inside, and not only did he do that, he put a hard stick right on the football and knocked it loose from Eric Baker. See, just the way Eric Baker fell at the end of that play, he just looked like he was a little bit woozy after that hit. Big-time play by Harry Coleman. Last year, through the first five games, this LSU defense had 15 you, takeaways. Ruling on the film is confirmed. First down. 15 takeaways through five games last year. They were plus 11 in turnover margin through the first five games. That was only their fifth takeaway of the 2008 season. A lot of statistics don't mean that much in football, but takeaways and turnover margin always tell a big story. Sure does. Scott on that little short toss. South Carolina defense swarming. Won't let him go anywhere. Dustin Lindsay led the charge number 44. Here's Reese. But Colt McCoy, I'm not sure anybody's playing any better football than he no. is right now. Just a Big 12, a conference of quarterbacks, and Colt McCoy playing as well, if not better than all of them. Andrew Hatch back in. He'll keep it. I'll tell you what, this South Carolina defense, one thing that they have done extremely well all season, well, they've done a bunch. I mean, they lead the SEC in total defense. But their offense has turned the ball over 20 times. And they've only allowed 27 points off of those turnovers. That was now the, the 21st South Carolina turnover. And all of a sudden, it's third and 10. They, they had to come on the field in their own territory. And two plays netted LSU zero yards. They really suck it up after the offense puts them in a the hole with the turnover. Third and 10. Lee back in. Sets in the middle of the pocket. Throws down the middle and drop right in the hands. A Brandon LaFell, a perfect throw from Jared Lee, and he dropped it. Yeah, that's a catch LaFell has to make. He's in the slot. Number one, he's working on Stoney Woodson, and he beats him. And it's a perfect throw by Jared Lee, right over the linebacker Marvin Sapp's hands. And LaFell, that's just one he's got to come down with. Just you lost could, concentration. You could see him turn his head ever yep. so slightly to look downfield. And the ball bounced right off of his hands. Dolphrey is in to punt. And just into the end zone. Great effort by Chad Jones, but he can't keep it past the white line. Let's go to Holly. Guys, lots of under injury updates out here. Jamon Meredith, the offensive lineman for South Carolina, will likely return. He's got a right ankle sprain, but he is going to try to give it a go. T-Bob Haybear looks like he's done for the night with a left knee injury. And Drake Nevis, the defensive tackle, they are examining the right upper ankle. He took a blow on the side, that bone right up the ankle. Looks like he is going to try to give it a go. All right, thank you, Holly. 1.51 to go first quarter in a 3-0 game. Garcia will start from the 20. And they'll try to get something out of the ground game with Davis. Picks up a couple, and that's it. He was a big-time recruit. Last item there, collect swords. And that's just not something you see every day, you know, <laughs> especially with a college quarterback. Maybe a linebacker, maybe. Not many quarterbacks. Blitz coming, throws underneath to his favorite receiver, Jared Cook, the tight end. And the big guy rumbles across midfield before Curtis Taylor pulls him down after a gain of 31. 
the 27th catch this year for Jared Cook. He leads in that department and also in receiving yard. Well, here he is in the slot, and it's just a quick crossing route. That's all it is. And Garcia sees him right in his vision, right in the middle of his screen, and gives him a nice catchable pass, one where he doesn't have to slow down. He can catch it and turn up field and make a big play. That was one of the things Steve Spurrier said about Garcia. He throws it where our guys can catch it and do something with it. That, that's a, a real art for a quarterback. Back to throw again down to the 33-yard line. Another first down and another nice pass by Garcia. This one to Jason Barnes. And what I see in those two throws from Steven Garcia is that he's calmed down and he's seeing the field and the ball is, is getting out of his hands a little quicker. I thought he earlier on in the game he was too quick to try to scramble. He wasn't really seeing the field. Right now in those last couple plays he looks like he's seeing what he needs to see and he's making good solid throws. Four of six, and he's hit his last four passes for 70 yards. And you're right, I think the butterflies are all gone. Steps up this time, but sacked. Back at the 40, Tyson Jackson looped around, got his second sack of the ball game. End of the quarter, 3-0, and coming out, Todd breaks out the silverware and napkins as Taste of the Town goes upscale in 90 seconds. Find out what's on the menu. You did this and this for less with store-wide Labor Day savings and free delivery. The Home Depot is making doing even more affordable. So the only question now is what could you do next? The Home Depot. How doers get more done. It's not just the ships, the armor, or aircraft. It's the will to fight and determination to win found inside every Marine. Battles won. It's time for Todd's Taste of the Town, brought to you by Chase. I found that Columbia, South Carolina is home to several excellent restaurants. And one of my favorites is a place called the Blue Marlin. It's been here for 15 years and it's actually located in what used to be an old train station. The restaurant features low country cuisine, including their signature dish, shrimp and grits. Here's what makes this dish special. It starts with grits that are milled across the street at the Adla Milling Company. Then they cook them for three hours in chicken stock and milk and a touch of cream. They saute local shrimp and andouille sausage and the dish is finished with some tassel ham gravy. Now you start this meal with some she crab soup, some fried green tomatoes and you've got yourself a southern spectacular. Mm. Yes sir. It's actually nice to see you in a place that doesn't have a garden hose in the living room to wash everything down, including the customers. I am versatile, mobile, and agile when it comes to eating. When it comes to eating, you're hostile. <laughs> Garcia. This is what he can do. Got a chance to get the first down, cuts back, and he's very, very close. Right at the sticks at the 23. You can check out all of this season's Taste of the Towns at ESPN.com and search Taste of the Town. I realize this was a more upscale uh -huh. meal, and I'm, I'm very happy for you, but you still got things in there like grits and gravy. Well, yeah, but just not as much gravy. It was a, it was a special gravy, a tasso ham gravy. Well, you know, okay. And the, and the grits and the I'm trying to be nice. Restaurant. Yeah, it really was an excellent it restaurant. It looked like it. It's a place I've been several times here. And it, Columbia really is a, a great place for food. There are a lot of excellent restaurants here. But the, uh, the Blue Marlin, one of my all-time favorites. Garcia did get the first down. That was a big-time play. He was in the row over the middle. That should yep. be, and flags come from everywhere. Yep. Chris it Hawkins. was intended for Barnes, 
and it looks like he really got twisted around, and it was another good throw by Garcia. Yeah. Garcia looks so comfortable right now. I mean, he is getting rid of the football. He's hitting his last step of his drop. He knows where he wants to go with the ball, and it's out of his hand, and he's accurate. You know, so many times you see quarterbacks throw the football, and it might be a completion, but the receiver has to wait for it or reach behind. Pass interference, number 29, defense. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot, automatic first back. But when you have a quarterback who consistently throws the ball in front of the receiver where it's supposed to be, where he has a chance to catch it and make a play upfield, I'll tell you what, receivers love that and coaches like Steve Spurrier love that. First and goal after the penalty. They'll spot it at the eight. This is where South Carolina has struggled. In the red zone, they've not been able to score a lot of touchdowns. Empty backfield for Garcia. Trying to scramble out of trouble. Not going to be able to as Kirsten Pittman, the defensive end number 49, brought him down. And that will really upset Steve Spurrier. You can tell that Garcia is one of those guys that's got that short clock in his yeah. head and he goes one two I got to get out of here well credit the front four of LSU because they're not giving him many lanes to scramble up through he did get the 16 yards out in the perimeter and all Steve wants him to do here is get rid of the football throw it if it's not there throw it out of the end zone and come up second and 10 rather than second and 16 it's already tough enough in the red zone without adding extra yardage Mike Davis checks back in. It was an empty backfield in the last set. Garcia throws to his tight end. Cook and Jared Cook inside the five. And out of bounds at the three. Patrick Peterson made the saving tackle. Second time they found Cook on a short crossing round. Does a nice job of maintaining his balance, shaking off the first tackler, and getting it inside the five-yard line. When you got a big target like that, 6'5", 240 pounds coming right into your vision, boy, that's nice for a quarterback. Very easy to flip him the football and let him make a play. Third and goal. McKinley is in the slot to the right. McKinley back at the end zone, and he's forced out. It's a nice defensive play. Yeah, Raheem Alim, number 84, forced the action. He was the guy who got into the backfield and busted up the timing. And Steven Garcia had to roll out of the pocket. And by the time he was ready to throw, it was too late. And Danny McRae, the safety, wasn't taking any chances either. Yep. He rode the receiver right out of bounds. Remember, he was the guy that tipped the ball last week on the third play of the yeah. game, and it went up in the air, and Percy Harvin took it 70 for a touchdown. Heartbreaking play for him. Ryan Suckup, who missed four last week against Kentucky, wants a chance at redemption and gets it here in the second quarter. Hits from 21 yards, and South Carolina, with a solid drive, has tied up this ball game. Cocky's happy. It's 3-3. Let's remember this time where none of us felt secure and fight for a future where everyone can. Because when the world seems like it's standing still, that's the perfect time for us to change it. <laughs> Buy three participating items and save $20 at fanatics.com. See wearetilgatenation.com for details. At Emirates, we are proud that our promise is to provide a better flying experience to all our customers. But today, fly better does not just mean showers and bars above the clouds, as well as wonderful in-flight service. As routes slowly open up and our fleet takes to the skies again, our number one priority is the safety of both our customers and staff. And to make sure that every precaution is taken when we fly you back to your loved ones or on your well-deserved vacation. Fly Emirates, fly better. Trivia question, what head coach led LSU to its first AP National Championship and South Carolina to its only football conference championship? Get a chance to think about that for a while. Keelan Williams and Trendon Holiday are deep for Suckup's kickoff. He provided the tying field goal. 
mentioned the red zone problems for South Carolina. That was their 20th field goal attempt in the red zone, the most of any team in the SEC. Williams a yard deep. Fakes the reverse. And even when they don't give it to Holiday, they want to use his presence to try to get something to happen. Let's go to Reese. Thanks very much. LSU will start from its 22-yard line. And South Carolina defense, after struggling a little early, has really stepped it up here. Uh, again, you got to keep in mind as you take a look at what LSU has done so far tonight. This defense, it, it's not, they're not doing it with smoke and mirrors. I mean, they're the best defense statistically in the league, only allowing 241 yards per game and only 3.2 yards per carry when it comes to playing defense against the run. I mean, they're legit. They're strong up front and they're fast in the back end. And they all like to hit. Scott. Takes it out to the 29. That's still about four yards shy of a first down. Culliver up from the safety spot, and both of these safeties will hustle up and run support. Emmanuel Cook is, uh, I mean, he's their leading tackler, 56 coming into the game. But you look at their numbers, I mean, it's uh, Ellis Johnson, who was at Mississippi State the last four years, has done a wonderful job in his first year here. Lead lost the football just dropped out of his hand. He dives on it and a flag down after the fumble recovery. Yeah, I think you're right. That ball just fell out of his hand. I don't think he double clutched it or tried to stop from throwing it. I think he just dropped it. Would have been a hold after the fact. I think that's what it is. Look, you know what? I'll tell you what he did. He didn't have his hands on the laces. He was trying to throw it quick, and he was just throwing it however he caught it, and his whole hand was without the laces, and the ball slipped right out of his hand. I mean, normally, you try to adjust that ball off the shotgun snap and get your fingers on the laces. He had no fingers on the laces on that particular throw, and he dropped it. Dolphrey to punt to Munnerlin. And Captain Munnerlin waits at the 35-yard line. We were just talking about that this weekend that South Carolina used to have a quarterback, Dondrell Pinkins, who always threw without the laces. He didn't yeah. care. Most quarterbacks need him. Pressure. They get it out of there. And Munnerlin will have to let it roll, and it takes a good roll for LSU down to the South Carolina 42-yard line, a 36-yard kick. And now the answer to tonight's Athlete. trivia question. What head coach led LSU to its first AP National Championship and South Carolina to its only football conference championship? Todd got this right this morning. Paul Dietzel, LSU, 1958 with the Chinese Bandits and South Carolina, 1969 Atlantic Coast Conference champions. And still, the only conference championship the school has won. Pepsi and Paul. He was some coach. Garcia. Boy, is this kid really throwing in rhythm. Jared Cook takes another catch. Dietzel at LSU from 1955 to 1961 won 46 games. 1958, the SEC and national champions. 61, the SEC champions again. South Carolina, 42, 53 and 1. Did not have success here but he did win that championship in 1969. And a lot of coaches have found coming from somewhere else that this is a tough place to recruit and a tough place to win. Davis on the keeper. And Garcia, excuse me, down to the 25-yard line. Well, we've seen Jared Cook be his go-to receiver. On this play, he becomes his primary blocker. I think this
this is a design quarterback run, but watch 84. Jared Cook get the key block. He will not let his guy go, and that seals the corner for Steven Garcia. Chris Hawkins was the guy Jared Cook blocked, and Steven Garcia is showing you why Steve Spurrier, I'm telling you, he, when he talked about him, when we saw him in practice, he just had a little glimmer in his eye like, Maybe, just yeah. maybe, this is the guy I've been waiting for. How many times did he say he gives us hope? Yeah, several. I mean, more than more than four or five, that's for sure. And you can see why. I mean, this kid has not only thrown the ball very well, but he has run very well. And at 6'2", 221 pounds, he gives you something extra when he can get to that outside. Well, the thing he feels good about with Garcia, too, is that... Uh, you know, he's, he's earned his way to this spot. I mean, he had to, to do a lot of things to, to get himself back in school, to get himself back into good graces at the university and the football program, and he's he's done what he's had to do. And he's worked hard when he's been out there, and now he has earned his way to be the starting quarterback here right now. Davis, the tailback, as they have reached the 26, they work out of the eye. Davis gets the carry. Inside the 25, Holly Rowe has more on our quarterback. Well, guys, one of the things he's done well is is uh, accept coaching. Steve Spurrier, as you know, very hands-on with his quarterbacks. Before the game, we saw Coach out there very hands-on, making sure his quarterback was ready to go tonight. I talked to Coach as they were walking off the field and said, do you think he's ready to go? And he said, absolutely. Not much bothers this kid. And Garcia has been an effective leader over here on the sidelines, talking to the offensive line. Guys, he is a cool customer out here tonight. And Holly, he's gotten a lot of work in tonight. He's had eight carries of the 12 that South Carolina has run the ball. Garcia throwing again. This time it looked like his receiver, Barnes, had broken off his pattern. One of the things, if you're a quarterback playing for Steve Spurrier, you have to learn how to manage and handle being coached by Steve Spurrier because Steve Spurrier is going to coach you hard. I mean, he's going to coach you well, but he's going to coach you hard. And you have to remember, Steve Spurrier is, 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 is as fierce of a competitor as anybody I've ever been around. So uh, you've got to be able to take what he's teaching you and how he's coaching you, but also be able to handle it when he gets on you a little strongly because Steve thinks he could go out there and still get it done, I think, most yeah, of the time. Probably could. Blitz coming. Garcia somehow got away. Keeping his eyes downfield, but LSU did a good job covering up after he beat the blitz. Gary Coleman, uh, Harry Coleman came flying in, and Garcia somehow got away from him. Yeah, safety blitz, he times it. See, whenever a safety can hit this on the run without having to slow down or stop, there's no way a lineman can pick him up. And he forces Garcia out of the pocket and has to run short of the first down. That was a, a well-timed blitz by Coleman and a nice call by Bradley Dale Pivido, the defensive coordinator, co-defensive coordinator over on the LSU sideline. This will be a 39-yarder for Ryan Suckup, who was already hit from 21. For the lead, and he is wide right. So Suckup, who missed four a week ago, one out of two tonight. And with South Carolina's offense, they can ill afford to miss out on scoring opportunities. They just missed out on that one. You did this and this for less with store-wide Labor Day savings and free delivery. The Home Depot is making doing even more affordable. So the only question now is what could you do next? The Home Depot, how doers get more done. No one knows where it comes from. It's the fighting spirit. Ready to fight whatever shape the battle takes. As long as there are battles, there will always be Marines. ESPN's College Football Primetime, brought to you by Aflac, ask about it at work, and Mercedes-Benz, located on the web at mbusa.com. Here's a look we've seen before, and there's another look we have seen before from Les Miles, some of the images 
from earlier in this ball game. LSU takes over after the missed field goal at the 21. Scott, who's been handled pretty well since the first couple of drives in this ball game, doesn't get much there. Let's check in with Reese. trying to get the offense untracked again. On the delay, they'll give it to Murphy, and Murphy that scat back speed tries to get to the outside. No luck. And whatever adjustment the South Carolina defense made after the first five minutes has been a good one. Well, I think LSU, this is an important offensive possession for them. And even though the score is tied, they've got to get their defense a little rest. They got them on a quick count here and should get the first down or very close to it. LSU went with a very quick snap again they've been using a no huddle approach for a good part of the evening and that time they caught the south carolina defense a little flat footed and got the first down this is close as murphy got right to the sticks and that was it and i just think lsu needs to it's different than last week last week it was 20 to nothing in the first half before they scored right before halftime. It's 3-3 three to three tonight, so they're not anywhere out of this football game, but they've got to get some offensive rhythm back. LSU gets the first down. They fake it to Trendon Holiday. Hatch comes in, tosses to Murphy. Murphy gets two, and Lottie Ajaboy makes the tackle, working his way down the line of scrimmage, and obviously South Carolina has done its homework because Ajaboy saw that one coming. Yeah, this is well played by Ajaboy. He has to play inside out on that. He's waiting for the shovel pass. Kind of a little trick play by Gary Croton's offense, but South Carolina not fooled at all. And Ajaboy makes the nice play from his nose tackle position. Second and eight. Hatch running the option again. Keeper across the 40 to the 43 should have another first down. And it's obvious that Hatch is the guy who gives them much more mobility from that quarterback spot when they want to throw Jarrett Lee comes yeah. in. Well, he's a little bigger. He's six foot four, 225 pounds, and uh, he's kind of a sneaky physical runner because he doesn't look like a real physical guy when you meet him in person, but he runs the football tough. I mean, he really does. He sticks his nose up in there, and uh, he's not afraid to take a hit, as we have seen uh, in the two games that we've covered it. And he's not a blazer, but he certainly has enough speed to run that option. Scott, about four. Jasper Brinkley, the enormous. So he has been everywhere to get the opportunity to start for LSU after Matt Flynn graduated. And Ryan Carollo was finally kicked off the football team. Now Keenan Williams will come in number five to get his shot at tailback. And Jarrett Lee is back in there throwing and completes to the sideline to Bird. Bird down to the 35-yard line. So they're really mixing it up, trying to give yeah. South Carolina different looks. This was a nice audible call from the line of scrimmage. They lined up, and South Carolina moved an eighth man into the line. See, they've got eight man in here, so they audible to an individual route because they know they've got man-to-man -man coverage. They keep both backs in to protect. So they got maximum protection. It's only a three-man route, and you're going against one-on-one -on -one coverage. Good choice from the sideline. South Carolina shows blitz, and they come with it. Lee hangs in the pocket, throws underneath, and a good throw to Chris Mitchell. His first grab. I like the no huddle. I, you know, I mean, they're kind of going muddle huddle. It's not a complete no huddle. It's not a two-minute tempo. But they're kind of putting the pressure on South Carolina's defense in this drive. They're forcing the same personnel to stay on the field, and they're attacking. And they certainly moved it better under these circumstances. Williams on the toss, cuts back inside, taken down at the 20, picks up nearly five yards. Holly Rowe, what do you have? Well, LSU quarterback coach Gary Crone really likes Jarrett Lee. One of the reasons that you see him as the starter tonight is because of his quick release. He said he can just flick it out there. He's like some of the greats getting rid of the ball like Marino and Jeff George. It's just so easy for him and so quick. 
with a defense like this rushing against him, that's a huge asset tonight. Yes, it is. Comes in very handy with these guys coming right down your throat. LaFell was the man in motion. Williams on a screen. Had to work to get back behind his blockers. Oh, what a play by Keelan Williams. Yeah, that really was. I mean, he did a nice little stutter step, and when he did that, it allowed Saron Black, number 70, to come back and get a block for him. Watch the little stutter step by Keelan Williams, and it allows 70 to come right back and get a block, and that sprung him up the middle of the defense for an extra 10 yards. Just it, good patience and vision by Keelan Williams. It looked like he had set up too far yeah. left to where he was supposed to be, but that little juke... Got him back behind his protection. Scott and Williams in there together. The red zone for LSU. Hatch for the end zone and incomplete intended for Mitch Joseph to back up tight end. Yep. And Eric Norwood was back in coverage. And that was a little change up by Gary Croton. He has Hatch in. You're expecting option, and he threw it on first down, but he threw it under the receiver. He's got to throw that to the back pylon, and he's actually very lucky it wasn't intercepted by Norwood. That's one of the reasons they moved Norwood from a defensive end spot to linebacker. They found out he was really good in space and could make plays like that. Now I would expect option from Andrew Hatch. Instead, they give it to Scott, and Scott powers his way to the end zone. And the signal finally touchdown. Quinn Johnson, the fullback, led the way in a gaping hole up the middle. I think South Carolina was thinking option yep. two. They were thinking outside, and LSU countered with an inside run. You mentioned Quinn Johnson, also the right guard. Lyle hit number 65 with an excellent block. And those two guys got Charles Scott into the end zone. A drive that took over five minutes, went 78 yards in 12 plays, all out of the no huddle as they alternated quarterbacks and threw just about everything in the playbook that they had against South Carolina, and it worked. Let's remember this time where none of us felt secure and fight for a future where everyone can. Because when the world seems like it's standing still, that's the perfect time for us to change it. Tonight's the night for delicious tortilla balls with flat bottoms. Easy to fill, easy to eat. Only from Old El Paso. This football season, buy three participating items and save $20 off Fanatics gear at wearetogenation.com. Still driving the old model, huh? I've been looking, but I just need someone to tell me what a good price is. Just use Auto Trader. It's the only one with Kelly Blue Book. It tells you if the price is good. You took me in <laughs> and you wrapped your arms around me for days. After being a part of millions of love stories. <laughs> At Kay, we believe that nothing yes. should get in the way of love. Get zero down special financing with the Long Live Love credit card. Available at K Jewelers. We see the chase for the cup continues. Jeff Burton tries to carry his momentum from the win last week to Martinsville. In the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup tomorrow on ABC. Coverage begins with NASCAR Countdown at 1 Eastern. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. And Gearhead has this to say. Well, Jimmy Johnson's still the point leader, but I'm anxious to see what Jeff Gordon does. He's a seven-time winner at Martinsville, but he's on a 36-race winless streak. So, uh, I don't know. He had the fastest final day of practice, so we'll see what he does. You have one of those big boxes at home with about 500 wrenches in them. <laughs> no. no, I need to organize my toolbox, though. That's There's for sure. <laughs> Out to the 29-yard line. What about that last touchdown? Well, a couple guys I really want you to watch. A uh, couple key blocks. The right guard, Lyle, hit. He's going to get a block. And then the fullback, Quinn Johnson. These guys are going to get a block on the two best players on the South Carolina defense, or the two best hitters. Hit's going to get a block on Jasper Brinkley right there. And then Johnson gets a block on Emmanuel Cook, the free safety. They knock both of those guys out of the way. And Charles Scott is able to take it into the end zone. A very impressive offensive drive for the LSU Tigers, led by their offensive line. 
350 to go in the half. Let's see what Garcia can do with that. Wants to throw one first down. Now takes off. Room to run. Garcia 34 and gets out of bounds. And here's Garcia Reese. On the keeper for Carolina. Second Reese not quite like last yeah. week when it looked like everybody was going down. Well, I'm impressed with Texas. I mean, as emotional as that Red River shootout was last week, and for them to come back and play as well as they're playing in the first half tonight, uh, Matt Brown's doing a great job of that you football bet. team. Garcia on the run, wants to throw, and he's got it complete down to the 24-yard line as... Kenny McKinley had to come back for it and was able to pick it up a gain of 40 yards. And from what we have seen so far, this kid could be for real. Well, he is. He got away with one here because you don't seldom get away with one throwing late down the field. He throws it late. It's underthrown. But the good news for South Carolina, they had McKinley, their best receiver, on Harry Coleman, who's a safety. And Coleman was not able to come back to the football. McKinley saw it. Coleman didn't. And McKinley adjusted to the underthrow and got the big catch. Nice catch by Kenny McKinley. They'll spot it at the 26, and Garcia wants a timeout with 2.52 left on the first half clock. Been a big first half for Steven Garcia in his first start at South Carolina. Let's remember this time where none of us felt secure and fight for a future where everyone can. Because when the world seems like it's standing still, that's the perfect time for us to change it. Mm. Buy three participating items and save $20 at fanatics.com. See wearetogetnation.com for details. At Emirates, we are proud that our promise is to provide a better flying experience to all our customers. But today, fly better does not just mean showers and bars above the clouds, as well as wonderful in-flight service. As routes slowly open up and our fleet takes to the skies again, our number one priority is the safety of both our customers and staff. And to make sure that every precaution is taken when we fly you back to your loved ones or on your well-deserved vacation. Fly Emirates, fly better. 10-3 LSU, but South Carolina driving with 2 minutes and 52 seconds to go in the first half. Steven Garcia in the helm for the Gamecocks. For the end zone and overthrown intended for Barnes. And he was covered by Jai Eugene step for step. Now that was good coverage by Eugene right there in his hip pocket. And uh, really took him out of position to make a play on the football. Garcia, after some early nerves, and you mentioned this earlier, has really seemed to calm down and be playing his position with a great deal of confidence, whether he's throwing it or running. Well, he makes you defend everything because he's thrown it well and he's also ran it well tonight. Ten carries tonight for 35 yards. Blitz and they pick it up. Throws underneath, and this is going to be a touchdown. Wide open, Wesley Saunders. 26 yards. Pretty tough to lose Wesley Saunders. He's 6'5", 274. Well, they've hit Jared Cook on the quick crossing route twice in the ball game. This time it's the blocking tight end, Wesley Saunders, and it really fooled the LSU defense. Expecting him to stay in the block, he crosses the formation and ends up with a touchdown. It took him a while, but he got it to the end zone. And South Carolina has tied it up. That's a pretty good response Boy. from that redshirt freshman quarterback. Well, Wesley Saunders is not Jared Cook. He's here, and he's going to run the crossing route. But watch what happens as this play develops. Right as they get ready to make an adjustment to the play, right here, 
the official kind of gets in the way here and the linebacker is not able to run with the tight end and because of that he breaks wide open on the left side of the formation Garcia sees it gets him the football and they get a touchdown Kelvin Shepard the linebacker froze for a moment because of the official there and South Carolina gets a touchdown. You remember what you pointed out earlier about Steve Spurrier saying some quarterbacks throw it so guys can yep. catch it and stride and do what they do best, and that's exactly what it was, a perfect pass. And that drive only took a minute 21, 71 yards, and Garcia accounted for virtually all the yards running and passing. Williamson Holiday will be deep for the kickoff that will come with 238 left. So a great response by South Carolina after LSU had a terrific drive of its own. I'm impressed with Steven Garcia. I mean, he's settled into the game. He's throwing the ball really accurately. And this is a good defense. I mean, it's not the same defense as they had a year ago, but they've got pressure on him, and they, uh, they're physical and they're talented. He's playing well. Suck up a shorter kick this time in the dangerous trended holiday. Across the 25, across the 30, and out of bounds. Let's take a look back with our Mercedes Benz drive recap. Well, uh, LSU, the last time they had the football, an impressive drive. 12 plays, 78 yards. They did it throwing, they did it running, they did it with two different quarterbacks. Both Jarrett Lee and Andrew Hatch were involved in it. And they worked the ball right down the field. They let their defense rest. And they took a brief lead on Charles Scott's touchdown run to cap the drive. A very impressive drive the last time the Tigers had the football. Lee will be the quarterback at the start of this drive. Lee with time throws too high. Intercepted by Carlos Thomas. 30, 20, needs a block. Carlos Thomas dives. I think they're saying he stepped out. Just inside the five-yard line is where they're going to mark it. A 47-yard interception return. Carlos Thomas with his third pick of the season. Well, they've got excellent protection for Jaron Lee, but the ball sails. It's high, and it's behind the intended receiver, Tolliver. A poor throw by Jarrett Lee, and Carlos Thomas comes up with the interception. And for Jarrett Lee, another costly interception. Last week, he threw one in the fourth quarter that was returned 51 yards by Brandon Spikes for a touchdown. He had an interception return for a touchdown against Auburn in the first game that we saw Jarrett Lee. That one not a touchdown, but South Carolina inside the five-yard line right before the half. And it was clear that Thomas did step out of bounds. That's close. Yep. That one is out. Yeah, that's the six-yard line, it appears, where his foot went out of bounds. And he's on the line there at the eight. Yep. So that's probably where, where they'll mark it. But still a huge play in South Carolina with an obvious chance to regain the lead. Well, this was the first time we saw Jaron Lee right before halftime again. A very careless throw. Gabe McKenzie turned it into a touchdown. Last week in the fourth quarter, this one kind of put the game away for the Florida Gators. Brandon Spikes returns it for the touchdown. And then just moments ago, and a couple of the interceptions that Jarrett Lee has thrown this year, it's because he didn't get his feet set to go with that quick release. That time, I think his feet were set, but he just threw a bad ball. It was high, and it was behind yeah. his intended receiver, Tolliver. So now they will move back to the eight-yard line and mark it there first and goal. Still plenty of time to go yeah. in the half, 217. South Carolina only with one timeout left. They've had to use two of their timeouts in the first half, but... Over two minutes to go before the halftime. A lot of time for Steven Garcia. He's got Davis with him in the backfield. A planned run by the quarterback. Cuts left. Garcia runs into the official and got to the five. Yeah, that official, I think it's a, might be the same guy. He's gotten away twice. The umpire, this time, uh, 
He gets the assist on the tackle of Garcia, trying to get oh, away. Oh, oh. Even even got a little forearm shiver he in gave, there. He gave him a little forearm shiver. Yeah. How about that? I think he was just trying to protect himself, but Wilbur Hackett Jr., the umpire, got a little, uh, got in the fray there twice. Wilbur, good shot. <laughs> That's something you don't expect as a running back. Blitz coming. Garcia. He's got Rowe. To the goal line. No signal. Boy, he was just short. Just Curtis inside Taylor the made the stop. And he got third and one. Garcia trying to line him up quickly. Got to make sure they're set for a second. Didn't get a clean snap. See, now that's a, that's a problem. Now they're going to have to call timeout. And there was no reason to hurt. No. None. I, I, unless they were just going to try to go quarterback sneak. But you still have to, number one, make sure that you've got enough guys on the line of scrimmage. Number two, you've got to make sure your team is set for a second before you snap the ball. And number three, you better make sure you keep your hands in there and get a clean snap. It was not a good exchange between Garrett Anderson and Steven Garcia. And again, a team that has struggled in the red zone scoring touchdowns with a golden opportunity because of their defense is now facing fourth and one. Well, if it was a planned call, I don't understand that. And if you look at the clock, you realize you've got oodles of time to do something with. You don't have to hurry. Now they use the timeout with 29 seconds to go. Fourth and goal from the one. This will be an interesting decision for Steve Spurrier. You can get your weekly dose of NFL news and analysis tomorrow on ESPN. Starting at 11 a.m. Eastern, Chris Berman hosts Sunday NFL Countdown, presented by IBM. Then at 7 Eastern, Chris and John Saunders deliver the day's highlights and scores on SportsCenter. That's Sunday NFL Countdown, presented by IBM at 11 a.m. and SportsCenter at 7 p.m. tomorrow on ESPN. You know, ordinarily, I would say here, because of a couple reasons, South Carolina is not a good power-running football team, number one. And you want momentum. You want to go into halftime with the lead. So ordinarily, I would say, even though you hated the way that third down play goes, you want to kick a field goal here and go in 13-10. to 10. But Ryan Suckup has made two of his last seven yeah. field goals. Now, even though this is a chip shot, he is certainly it would be not from a, an angle. Yeah, it would still be from an angle. So it will be interesting to, to see what Steve does. Certainly, I know he wants to go in with the lead. That third down play was really critical. Well, whatever play they run here, I think it's going to be Garcia trying to either get to the perimeter or take it up the middle on the quarterback draw. They actually lost yardage on that bobbled snap. Yeah. They were inside the one on third down, and now they're just a shade outside the one for the fourth down play. See the numbers on Garcia, 41 yards net. See, they've been in the shotgun so much when they got under center, they had a bad exchange on third down. Now this will be a yeah. timeout at LSU. The old basketball play. Yeah. Let them line up, see what they're going to do, taking it out of bounds, and then we'll, uh, we'll call timeout and readjust. Take a look at the SEC standings because it's... Uh, Really awfully close in the East. Georgia 3-1, Florida 3-1. Vandy now after the loss today at 3-2. and two. South Carolina at 2-2. Two and two. And I'll tell you what, with their defense, if Garcia plays yeah. well, they can still be a big factor in this. And in the West, it is pretty much a one-horse race right now with Alabama, although LSU is only one game back in the loss column. Everybody else has two or three defeats. The East is obviously the strongest overall, but Alabama is that undefeated, unknown quantity. And really, they seem to be getting better yeah, every week. They're for real. They really are. Now, they had another game today where the, they had to kind of fight and claw to get the win, but they're... Uh, now their defense is playing extremely well, too, much like this South Carolina defense. When you have a defense like that, it's going to keep you in every game and give you an opportunity to win every Saturday. Big fourth down play right here for Steven Garcia. You've got to get the snap first. That's the first thing, get a secure snap from Garrett Anderson. Garcia on the toss. To the goal line is Davis. Yeah. Touchdown. Wow. And LSU is really upset. Another late call. Curtis Taylor made the tackle. 
I think they'll take a look at this one anyway. I mean, they, they look at every play. They review every play. I didn't think he got the ball across the plane when I first watched it. I was watching the play through my binoculars, and I didn't think he got the ball across. Boy, is that close. He doesn't stretch. He doesn't reach the ball. Hard to tell from that shot. I really did not think he had it, but it was, if he did, he got it just by a hair. Only a part of the ball has to get across that plane. He had it up a little bit on his chest instead of tucked under his arm, and I think that may have put it across the plane. The thing that South Carolina has in, in its advantage is that it was originally ruled a touchdown. Yeah. So they would have to find enough evidence to overturn the call. Really a nice play by Curtis Taylor, number 27, who made the first contact and was trying to pull Davis back in hopes that some other white shirts would be there to finish him off. But Curtis Taylor, the free safety, the senior, 6'3", 203 pounds, was the guy who made the play. Todd, I would say, looking at that, if they had called it a touchdown, it's going to stand. If they had called it no touchdown, it's going to stand because the replays are not definitive enough. It shows it was awfully close. The ball just has to break the plane. It doesn't have to be the whole ball across the end zone. It just has to break. Any part of the front of the football has to break the plane. Man, was that close. And I was surprised at the call. His fans touch back. I don't know any other call that they could have made. After yeah. it was determined on the field that it was a touchdown, I think they got all pulled it and they did. Big run for Mike Davis. Only his second rushing touchdown of the season. And South Carolina has taken the lead. Steve Spurrier rolls the dice and it pays off with 22 seconds to go in the first half. As you said, the safe play would have been to kick the field goal, yeah. have the momentum going in, say, look at what we're doing, guys. We've taken the lead over LSU at the half. Now he's really got the momentum. He can go in and say, now look what we're doing. We're up by touchdown. Well, and, and Steve Spurrier, if you know anything about him, you remember watching him when he coached Florida. He doesn't like to kick field goals. No. He likes touchdowns. He likes throwing them first and foremost, <laughs> but he'll take them any way you can get them. He likes seven over three. And uh, Steven Garcia, his redshirt freshman quarterback, making his first start, has looked outstanding here, particularly in the second quarter. Throwing on rhythm, throwing on time, throwing accurately. And then when it's not there, showing that ability to get out of the pocket and make some plays with his feet. He has really looked good. The touchdown pass to Wesley Saunders. And Steven Garcia has given this offense a real spark that Steve Spurrier has been waiting for. What is interesting about Garcia, with all the outstanding quarterbacks uh, that Steve Spurrier had at Florida, I think he's got a stronger arm than those guys do, and I think he is a bigger, stronger runner. Whether he yeah. will develop into the guy who constantly finds those wide open receivers time and time again and could run this offense to perfection, only time will tell. I think the guy that had the best arm that he had at Florida was Rex Grossman. I mean, he really yeah. threw the football well, but you're right about his ability to run and being a little bigger and stronger. Steven Garcia has been really a, a pleasant surprise tonight for Steve Spurrier. Holiday from the five, in front of a big wedge. Takes it out to the 25. Now here's tonight's Good Hands flashback presented by Allstate. We'll take you back to 1994 in Baton Rouge. It was a rain-soaked game. The Gamecocks trailed LSU all night until Stanley Pritchett's one-yard plunge made it 18 17 South Carolina's defense would hold, highlighted by Terry Cousins, two fourth-quarter interceptions. The second securing a win for head coach Brad Scott and the Gamecocks. South Carolina won an 18 to 17. You talk about momentum. Not only does South Carolina have the momentum with the score right before halftime, and LSU has the, the turnover by Jarrett Lee to kind of go in and try to regroup from. South Carolina, because they deferred 
when they started the game, we'll, we'll start the second half with the football. So uh, a great opportunity to build on that momentum in the third quarter. And you have given the world of confidence to your redshirt freshman quarterback in his first start. He has been sensational in the first yeah. half. Well, you've got two redshirt freshman quarterbacks playing. Jarrett Lee for LSU is making his third start. Steven Garcia for South Carolina making his first start. When you have young quarterbacks, a lot of times the game is just going to boil down to which guy makes the fewest mistakes. Now, South Carolina has to lean on Garcia a little bit more maybe than LSU does on Jarrett Lee because LSU has a better running game right. coming into the game, maybe a stronger offensive line. But still, the, the interception by Jarrett Lee, the difference in this ball game right now, both teams have played extremely well, but that interception was huge and that has come back to kind of hurt Jarrett Lee the way it did in the game against Florida, the way it did in the game against Auburn earlier. It wasn't a pick six, but it led to the touchdown. Now with only four seconds left, LSU still has to go 65 yards, and South Carolina rushes three and drops eight. Throw underneath is tipped and a nice catch by LaFell, but he only reaches the 41-yard line on the last play of the first half. And they'll come to their feet in Columbia, South Carolina. The home folks have the lead over visiting LSU 17 to 10. Let's go to Holly. Coach, what made you decide to go for the touchdown, not the field goal there? Oh, it's fourth and one. We had to try to make seven, I thought. So Tell our field goal kickers missed a couple, but still we had to go back. How has your quarterback met or exceeded your expectations here in the first half? Well, he's moving around pretty well, and he's, he's throwing the ball pretty well. He's doing pretty well. All right, thanks, Coach. He's doing a little bit better than pretty well right now. He's got him up over LSU, our halftime score. South Carolina 17, LSU 10. Let's remember this time where none of us felt secure and fight for a future where everyone can. Because when the world seems like it's standing still, that's the perfect time for us to change it. Tonight's the night for delicious tortilla balls with flat bottoms. Easy to fill, easy to eat. Only from Old El Paso. This football season, buy three participating items and save $20 off Fanatics gear at wearetogaination.com. You did this and this for less with store-wide Labor Day savings and free delivery. The Home Depot is making doing even more affordable. So the only question now is what could you do next? The Home Depot, how doers get more done. It's not just the ships, the armor, or aircraft. It's the will to fight and determination to win found inside every Marine. Battles won. At Emirates, we are proud that our promise is to provide a better flying experience to all our customers. But today, fly better does not just mean showers and bars above the clouds as well as wonderful in-flight service. As routes slowly open up and our fleet takes to the skies again, our number one priority is the safety of both our customers and staff. And to make sure that every precaution is taken when we fly you back to your loved ones or on your well-deserved vacation. Fly Emirates, fly better. Welcome back to ESPN College Football Primetime. For the touchdown. But uh, South Carolina able to put that touchdown across right before the end of the half to, uh, to take the seven-point lead. And those are the kind of turnovers that really are difficult to overcome against a good football team. And we're seeing two good football teams in the game tonight. Sure are. South Carolina will get it first. Captain Munderland is deep. <laughs> and has to retreat six yards deep in the end zone. He'll take it there. And the Gamecocks will start at the 20-yard line. Coming out party tonight for a South Carolina quarterback that Steve Spurrier told us earlier this week, and he said this several times, gives us hope. Yeah. And after seeing him, boy, does he ever. He really does. I mean, he's a, he's a nice player. He's got a great arm. He can make all the throws Steve wants in the offense, and he's got the mobility to make plays when the protection breaks down. It'll be interesting to see if he continues to play within himself, within the framework of the offense. He still is a redshirt freshman, and this still is his first start. Let's see if he can avoid the big mistake that bit Jarrett Lee right before the end of the first half. Morning, 
Garcia will keep after the play fake. Flag is down. He's knocked out of bounds at the 25-yard line and ends up going into one of the sideline officials. And we'll check out the flag. Thrown in the area was normally holding, and that's the signal. During the run, holding number 84 offense, 10 yard penalty, we play first down. Jared took the tight end. Yeah, it's going to be right here. We've seen him get some good blocks on the perimeter earlier in the game. That time he got his hands on the outside of Chris Hawkins, number 29, and that drew the flag. One of the problems that it's obvious that South Carolina is going to have if the running backs don't get more yardage, those play action fakes from the quarterback Garcia are not going to be respected. He's going to be a much easier target. So some of his teammates have to step up a little yeah, bit for him. Absolutely. And he uh, he's only going to be able to take so many hits. As we take a look at his pass chart tonight, kind of interesting when you look at it because most of his deep damage has been on the right side. But he's been very effective in the short to medium passes on the left side. So uh, kind of balancing it out, left and right, short and deep. Second and long, Garcia in the shotgun. He's got Bobby Wallace, number 22, back with him. Pressure coming. Garcia keeps the play alive, taken down at the 12. Flag down, looked like a face mask. Or was it a horse collar? Well, whatever it is, if it's against LSU, it's a costly penalty because they've really got South Carolina backed up. Nice job of pressuring Garcia. Personal foul, horse collar tackle, 24 defense, 15-yard penalty automatic, first down. We knew this was a new rule this year, but this is the first time that we've seen it called in a football game. And there it is, right in the back. He has the back yeah. of the jersey. And that rule is to prevent injury. The tackle was made by Gary Beckwith, the outstanding middle linebacker who was just back for his second game after being injured. Now you can grab the jersey and pull somebody down. You just can't get it hooked in behind the, uh, underneath the shoulder pad. Quick throw out to the flat to Barnes. Barnes struggling for that first down. Got close, but looks like he'll be about a yard shy. Let's go to Holly. Well, guys, I caught up with LSU coach Les Miles at the half. I asked him what they need to improve on, and he said particularly some of their defensive coverage. He said we've let their big tight ends loose. They've hurt us. We already saw an adjustment just there. I saw Hawkins right on the pocket of Jared Cook. I asked him what he told his quarterback, Jared Lee, about that costly interception. He said, I told him, we need you to win this game. You're going to have to make throws for us to win. You cannot make that kind of a throw. You've got to correct it. Davis. Enough for first down up at the 37-38 yard line. Marlon Favorite made the tackle. I'll just go back to that penalty on LSU. It was such a critical penalty. It was second and 19. They had South Carolina backed up. Probably Steve Spurrier was going to call something conservative for Steven Garcia on their first possession of the second half. Instead, the penalty gave him an automatic first down. And now they have another first down out beyond the 35-yard line. So a very costly penalty for the LSU defense. Redshirt freshman changing plays. Garcia making the first start of his career and doing brilliantly. Cook stays inbound, fights for extra yardage, ends up picking up seven before he's brought down by Harry Coleman. The fourth catch of the night for the 240-pound tight end. And his 30th catch on the season, the leading receiver for the South Carolina team. And it's been the same route. The short crossing route right in front of the face of the quarterback, Garcia. And every time Garcia has hit him in stride where he can catch it and continue to run and turn it upfield.
Garcia, bubble screen. Get him about another five yards with Mo Brown before he is gang tackled and thrown back. See, that's just like a running play. I mean, basically, you know, it's second and short. They want to run the football. They want to get an easy first down. It's just throw it out there and let him run and make one guy miss. You got a lead blocker out there. It's just the same as it's just easier than trying to run inside against this LSU defense. But I think that pass lets you see how strong an arm that kid has. Now, that ball gets out there in a hurry and gives that receiver a chance to make more yards. It gets there in a hurry and it gets to the right spot. South Carolina with an impressive drive so far to start the second half. They have reached the LSU 47. That play was messed up on both offense and defense. It looked like there were people moving all over the place. Two flags are down. Now, see, they're going to call a late hit, and I don't agree with that. Uh, they called the late hit on Harry Coleman. And when I was watching this, now Steve Spurrier was calling for it. It was right on his sideline, and he was out calling for that penalty I didn't think this was a late hit Garcia was throwing the football away and I thought the contact was pretty uh, simultaneous with the throw had two fouls on the play had illegal motion number five on the offense had a personal foul roughing the passer number 24 on the defense those penalties offset first half the bottom line is another costly penalty on LSU because otherwise it would have been a five yard penalty here's the throw, well, he did Gone. go high. He went high. Yeah. It wasn't so much that it was late. It was where the hit took place. He did hit him up high around the head. Yeah, it was helmet to helmet. Yep. And you simply can't do it. It was a good sales job by Coleman. He got up and acted very innocent yep. like he hadn't done anything. Well, he had me fooled <laughs> so I saw it again. So it's first and ten all over again. I really think they need to look at that rule, too. Motion penalty for five yards and a roughing the quarterback penalty should not offset each other. Yeah. See, that's why you see after that play, they run it on first down inside, they gain nothing. One yard, maybe. That's why you're seeing a lot of these quick screens. Garcia getting the ball out there quickly to a receiver with one blocker in front. That's more effective than trying to run the ball inside. Sure. In the NFL, by the way, they do not offset a minor and a major penalty against each other. They enforce the major. Second and nine. Garcia rolling the pocket under a lot of pressure. Cuts it upfield. Ball's loose. Lost they ripped it. it out on him. They ripped it out on him. He, he was carrying the football, and they really went in there and ripped the football out of Garcia's arm. And he's still down. Perry Riley with the recovery. This was a corner blitz from the backside. They really brought pressure on him, and as he turned upfield... There were two or three LSU Tigers wrapping him up, and the ball is stripped out by Chris Hawkins, number 29. He's the guy that just went in there with one intent only, and that was to rip the football out. He knew that there were two other guys to tackle Garcia, and Hawkins went in and just ripped that football right out. And there's the big mistake by the South Carolina young quarterback. Can LSU capitalize? Murphy will get the carry, and he is gang-tackled as he is unable to turn the corner against South Carolina and Garcia will now be tended to on the sideline. And that's the one of the problems you have with a running quarterback that's going to carry the ball so many times. He gets hits when he throws and he gets hit when he when he runs uh, the football. And he's taking a few shots tonight. South Carolina showing eight-man front again, bringing that extra safety. Emmanuel Cook up near the line of scrimmage. Another audible check from the LSU sideline. Murphy, Boy, nothing to do it. That play looked ugly. It was a bad exchange between Brett Helms, the center, and Jarrett Lee, the quarterback. Lee almost dropped it on the way back, then almost had a fumble in the exchange. 
to the tailback. And that play was uh, was not pretty from start to finish. And Eric Norwood was the first of five guys that just ate him up. Norwood and Cliff Matthews from the defensive end spot. Boy, can South Carolina's defense do it again? They give up a turnover on offense. Their defense comes out, and they got them third and long again. Play action fake to Murphy, and they did do it again. I think these guys take a turnover as a challenge. They take it personally. Ellis Johnson dialed up a blitz on that third and long. LSU is trying to set up a screen, it appeared, and Jarrett Lee ends up throwing the football away. So a three and out after the South Carolina turnover. That is just excellent discipline by the South Carolina defense. Carlos Thomas, who earlier had an interception, is the player it's down. And you can see them pressing the toes back on his left shoe, usually a sign of a cramp. That's the good news. Holly Rowe, what do you have? Well, after that fumble, you saw Steven Garcia doubled over here on the sideline. He didn't want any help from the training staff. Looked like he took a hard blow to the sternum or stomach area. He just collected himself here on the sideline. Steve Spurrier came over, gave him a nice earful after that turnover, but he appears to be just fine, other than a little bit of wounded pride. Well, Holly, as Todd pointed out early, you have to take what you get from Steve Spurrier. He is proven to be a tremendous quarterback coach, but he's not easy on him. And if you make a mistake, you're going to hear about it. Munnerland is deep, but they're going to whistle this play dead. Prior to the snap, ball starts, 44, offense, five-yard penalty, remains full down. And Thomas being assisted to the locker room, possibly for an IV. That's about the only thing you can do in a locker room to help him get rid of cramps. High snap, but he brought it back down, and a nice high-floating punt. Munnerland backs up and makes the fair catch at the 10. 47-yard kick and no return. Think you know all about Steve Spurrier? Find out when we come back and play Did You Know? Let's remember this time where none of us felt secure and fight for a future where everyone can. Because when the world seems like it's standing still, that's the perfect time for us to change it. Tonight's the night for delicious tortilla balls with flat bottoms. Easy to fill, easy to eat. Only from Old El Paso. This football season, buy three participating items and save $20 off Fanatics gear at wearetogenation.com. You did this and this for less with store-wide Labor Day savings and free delivery. The Home Depot is making doing even more affordable. So the only question now is what could you do next? The Home Depot, how doers get more done. It's not just the ships, the armor, or aircraft. It's the will to fight and determination to win found inside every Marine. Battles won. You do what feels right, then own your style. Phillips One Blade, your style made simple. There's always a way to make life better. Phillips. Uh this telecast is available in high definition. Brought to you by Pioneer's new Kuro. South Carolina will take over at its own 10, leading LSU here in Columbia. And they'll lose four on the handoff to Bobby Wallace. And the running backs unable to do yeah. almost anything. The only running game they've got is the quarterback Garcia. Well, LSU's defense, the last time on the field, they had South Carolina pinned down very much like this. But they let them out of there with a couple of costly penalties. 
Now a, a big loss of yardage play on first down, and they've got Steven Garcia backed up inside his own 10 again. Let's see if the Tigers can flip the field a little bit and keep South Carolina in this part of the end zone. Davis is back in as the running back. They go with four wideouts. Garcia again with that crossing pattern. Got it this time to his best receiver, Kenny McKinley. And he's brought down by Chad Jones. They have used that pattern extensively tonight with great success. Yeah, they've mostly hit the tight ends. This time McKinley was in the slot. That ball just a hair behind McKinley because he was under duress. But McKinley still able to make the catch and turn it back to the inside. Third and six, and Kenny McKinley is now second behind Sterling Sharp in yards. He had already passed the South Carolina great for a number of catches. Garcia under pressure, throws wide this time, intended for Barnes. Boy, Harry Coleman made a nice decision on that. He came on a safety blitz. Now, he was the guy who had the late hit on the quarterback in the last possession. Watch Harry Coleman from the right of your screen. He has a clear shot at Garcia, and he pulls off and just runs by him. He doesn't even touch the quarterback. Garcia throws the ball too far outside. That was a, a guy who learned his lesson from the possession before, Harry Coleman, on the safety blitz. Holiday, the number one punt returner in the country, averaging 25-1, weights at his own 45-yard line. Poor kick. Picked That's up by smart. one of the up men. A very, very bright play by Patrick Peterson, who's a defensive back. He saw that ball pop right toward him and took advantage of it. Great field. Let's remember this time where none of us felt secure and fight for a future where everyone can. Because when the world seems like it's standing still, that's the perfect time for us to change it. Tonight's the night for delicious tortilla balls with flat bottoms. Easy to fill, easy to eat. Only from Old El Paso. This football season, buy three participating items and save $20 off Fanatics gear at wearetogenation.com. Noom is easy because it takes five to ten minutes a day. It's not that much work. You just have to want to do it. If you got five, ten minutes, you can change a lot in those five, ten minutes. Every other diet, it just says to you, you can eat this, you can eat that, you can't eat this, you can't eat that, and that's it. Noom helped me see that it's about what's happening in my head. I'd used a couple of apps before, and they never really worked. They put you in a good place to make the right decisions, and that's the tool you need. You change up here, everything will fall into place. ESPN's College Football Primetime, brought to you by Liberty Mutual Insurance. Vote now at coachoftheyear.com and Mercury and your local Lincoln Mercury dealers. South Carolina State Fair going on at the same time as our ball game. First time in 31 years they've had a night game while the fair was going on. One of the things you can get there, deep fried Pepsi. Boy, that should be on Taste of the Town when we get back to South Carolina. You ever had deep fried? Pe You've no. had deep fried everything else. No, I like Pepsi, but I like mine cold <laughs> and on with lots of ice, not fried. Oh, you got to try it fried. Mm. A little gravy on it, <laughs> nothing like it. <laughs> Boy, it's made traffic a nightmare yeah. tonight. I'll tell you that. I think one, they just one of the guys finished. in our crew was, was actually in the back of a pickup truck trying to get here, <laughs> trying to find the fastest way to get here. Dave Dare, our spotter, he'll do anything to make it on time. Lee in the shotgun. Four-man rush, a little swing, and look at that coverage by South Carolina. They got it out to Keelan Williams. There were three defenders there led by Norwood, and then the middle linebacker Jasper Brinkley got out there. What a diagnosis they made on this yeah, play. I mean, they read it right away. Did you see Norwood? He took about three steps towards the quarterback Jeez. and then just peeled and made a beeline right for the receiver. They read it all the way. And this South Carolina defense, I'll tell you what, they're for real. Ellis Johnson, his first year of the defensive coordinator, has done a marvelous job with this defense. I've never seen a screen covered quite that well. Lee with a receiver deep. Oh, my goodness. Bobby. Drop. Demetrius Bird had a step and he couldn't hold it. Culliver and Munnerlin 
were back on the coverage for South Carolina, but they were behind. Yeah, Demetrius Bird ran right in between him, just split the defenders, and it's another beautiful throw by Jarrett Lee. And at the very end, Chris Culliver, number 17, is able to grab the arm of Demetrius Bird mm. and not allow Bird to pull the football in. We've seen two deep throws by Jarrett Lee that have been perfect. One in the first half that Brandon LaFell dropped on a third and long. That was third and long, and Demetrius Bird not able to, to bring it in. Bird is down. Munnerlin is down. Culliver wouldn't even be here in a South Carolina uniform if he hadn't originally committed to North Carolina State, and then Chuck Amato was fired. He decided he was not going to go to NC State. He would sign with South Carolina, and it looks like Munnerlin has come up with cramps as well, and now Bird is up. Let's remember this time where none of us felt secure and fight for a future where everyone can. Because when the world seems like it's standing still, that's the perfect time for us to change it. Tonight's the night for delicious tortilla balls with flat bottoms. Easy to fill, easy to eat. Only from Old El Paso. This football season, buy three participating items and save $20 off fanatics gear at wearetogaination.com. For a while, it have had like a kind of negative self-image. There's like this contrast between like the way that I was thinking about my personality and the way that I was thinking about my body. With Noom, I was able to learn how to interrupt those habits and create new ones. So my goal was 35 pounds and I'm, I've lost about 30 pounds now. So I've never been this confident in my body. My name is Sarah and I changed my life with Noom. Visit Noom.com and lose the weight for good. It's football primetime presented by Hampton Hotel, South Carolina with the lead. Late third quarter, LSU punting it away. And Akeem Augusta is back to receive. Captain Munnerlin with cramps has gone to the locker room. Fair catch made, and again, South Carolina will start at the 10-yard line. Did you know that when Steve Spurrier got his Heisman Trophy in 1966, he immediately gave it to University President Dr. J. Wayne Wright so the award could be shared by the Florida students and faculty. That gesture was so moving that Florida student government raised money to purchase a replacement for Spurrier. From that time forward, the Downtown Athletic Club has issued two trophies, one to the individual winner and one to the school. And that's what one of the things that makes Steve Spurrier so unique. Normally, people who were really good at what they do, and he was a great college quarterback, are not good coaches because they don't understand the mechanics of what they did. They just did it. But Steve Spurrier is an exception. You keep it on the ground. Davis trying to get a couple of yards, and that's all he does get. Cotrera makes the tackle. Spurrier won his national title at the University of Florida along with seven Southeastern Conference titles. He was a multiple SEC Coach of the Year and fourth most in wins in the Southeastern Conference with 100. What a program he had at the University of Florida and he is trying to replicate it here at South Carolina. Garcia short set he's in trouble. That was a brilliant individual effort by Tremaine Johnson. He actually appeared to leap yep. over the blocker. He was guessed. able to get up and make the stop. Yeah, he guessed on the snap count, so he just beat him off the football immediately. I think that was Terrence Campbell, number 60, trying to block him. But he, he jumped over the line of scrimmage, got up, and then still got to the quarterback for the sack. An exceptional individual effort. Well, again, here's where Garcia needs to be smart with the football. Your defense is playing great. You're backed up in your own end. Don't force something if it's not there. Draw play. Davis spins off a tackler. Back to the original line of scrimmage. Plus one. They'll have to kick from there. LSU's defense here in the second half looks a lot different than they did in the first half. I mean, they are more aggressive. They're going after Steven Garcia. They've, they've really shut down any running game that South Carolina has had. And they're yeah, going to get really field position. Up, yep, they? they have. And I, I would expect we'll see Andrew Hatch in this possession for LSU. They're going to have good field position. And one thing they've done pretty well tonight is run the option with Andrew Hatch. 
I expect to see it this offensive set. South Carolina's running backs have gained only 19 yards tonight. Trendon Holiday driven back to his 39. This kid with the blinding speed and the NCAA's best average, but not this time. He returns at eight yards after a punt of 50 and will check in with Reese Davis. Take your hats off from Texas. That's just a yeah. tremendously impressive two-week performance, isn't it? Really is. It's so hard to get your team up to the same kind of level of intensity and focus. Back-to-back -back weeks. Really impressed with that. Jared Lee at quarterback. He'll go from the 47. Keelan Williams. Midfield for about three. The South Carolina defense, we mentioned Ellis Johnson, the new coordinator. You take a look at the comparison from last year to this year. One of the things that's interesting, though, when Ellis came in, he's the only new guy. The other defensive assistants were all on this staff. Brad Lawing, the defensive line coach. Shane Beamer, the guy who coaches the cornerbacks. Ron Cooper, who coaches the safeties. And that really helped Ellis Johnson evaluate personnel quickly because those guys were familiar with everybody. Lead back to throw deep down the middle. Same pattern they ran last time that was open. This time he misses Bird by a step. Culliver and Munnerlin were beaten again, and they couldn't hit him. Let's go to Holly. Well, the other thing Ellis Johnson, the new defensive coordinator, has done is really crack down on loafs. Now, a lot of places do this. It's not unusual, but they chart loafs. That means not running to the football, but he takes it a little bit farther. He wants an all-out sprint to the football, not just jogging. He said their first scrimmage, they had 67 loafs. The second, they were down to 37, and now it's about 10 per game. Guys, they got his message. You better fly to the ball. Yeah, Holly, they've been flying tonight. And Addison Williams is on coverage on that last play and not Captain Munnerlin. Munnerlin was uh, still in the locker room being treated for cramps. This pass completed to Dixon, the tight end, and he's got the first down. Yeah, this is a nice read by Jared Lee. The first time we've called Dixon's name tonight, it's a blitz. He gets right in between the linebackers, and Jared Lee finds him for the first down. Well, you got to hand it to South Carolina. They have certainly swarmed on defense. The LSU comes in with only one loss. They were knocked off by Florida last week by 30. South Carolina has overcome a slow start to go 5-2. and two. And this would be a huge win for them, particularly since they're starting their redshirt freshman quarterback for the first time. It would give them momentum for the rest of the year. LSU, as the defending national champion, really wants to win this game and not drop their second of the season. And they'll blow this one dead as Lee went back to throw. Prior to the snap, false start, 78, offense. Five-yard penalty, second down. Joseph Barksdale, their right tackle moved early. One thing that South Carolina is doing in this game quite a bit is they're bringing that extra safety down into the uh, line of scrimmage area very late. They're allowing Jarrett Lee to get into his cadence, and they're trying to drop him down in there late to get an extra guy around the football to stop the LSU running game. Usually it's Emmanuel Cook who moves in there late. They show blitz and come with it. Tackle made by Jordan Lindsay, the defensive end, the twin brother of Dustin Lindsay, the linebacker. Second set of twins they have had here recently playing defense. Casper and Jasper Brinkley were the others. Casper used up his eligibility a year ago. He's on the practice squad of the Carolina Panthers. Third and 11, a huge third down here. LSU has been throttled on offense. Lee, under some pressure, throws over the middle and complete. What a tremendous throw. 
Terrence Tolliver with the catch. He's the tall receiver, six foot five, and he had to go up in the air and get that one. It was right before the half. Lee was trying to hit Tolliver and threw it high and behind him. This one was high, but it was in front of Tolliver where he could still go up and snatch the football. And that one had to be high. It was well covered. This one goes out in the flat to Keelan Williams. And Williams will pick up almost nine yards. Williams getting a lot more action tonight than what he's received through the first five games this year as we see one of those defensive stalwarts for South Carolina, Eric Norwood, down. Boy, we have seen several South Carolina players down. This week on Monday Night Football, Jake Cutler and Brandon Marshall will lead the Broncos' high-powered offense against Matt Castle, Randy Moss, and the New England Patriots. Monday Night Football on ESPN at 8.30. Our coverage starts at 7 Eastern with Monday Night Countdown delivered by UPS. Sometimes you will hear a fact that blows your mind. When Matt Castle took over at quarterback for New England, it was his first start since high school. Oh my God. <laughs> it's just yeah, amazing it is. that he would be in the NFL with a team that great, and he hadn't even started a college game. Yeah. Yeah. Remarkable. Norwood is out on this second down and short, and uh, Andrew Hatch is in for LSU, the running quarterback. Second and short, he got a lot of options open to you here. Scott the tailback, and he'll get the carry. Lowers his shoulder. It'll be first and goal at about the seven-yard line. The LSU really needs to capitalize on this drive with a touchdown because their defense has kept the football in this end of the field. They've stopped South Carolina deep. They've punted them deep. Then their defense has held them. Yep. They've gotten good field position. Every possession this quarter, they've got to capitalize here and tie the score up. They, they can't expect to have the same field position edge in the fourth quarter as they've had in the third. Hatch. Throws back against the grain, has a man wide open for a touchdown, Richard Dixon, the tight end. So Hatch, the running quarterback, rolls to his right, and they crossed him up. They sure did, and, and Richard Dixon did a beautiful job of selling the play because he actually showed block for a count or two before he released, and that really fooled the South Carolina defense. Well, Hatch showed you he is not a one-dimensional quarterback. The extra point by Colt David is good. And we have a tie ball game, 17-17, with 44 seconds to go in the third quarter. Richard Dixon is right here. And watch as this play starts and the quarterback rolls. He's going to actually show block for a little count and then release and go across the formation. It's a design throwback, but he shows block, and therefore nobody picks him up as he crosses the formation. You can't be too impatient with that if you're Richard Dixon. You know you're the designed receiver. The ball is coming to you, but you got to sell that block first. And Andrew Hatch delivers the football for the touchdown. They capitalized on the field position. And it was Andrew Hatch that got the touchdown throw. Well, you're right. You only got so many opportunities, and yeah. the punting game had kept him down there. The defense had kept him down there, and they finally took advantage of it to tie it at 17. Well, as Johnson told us yesterday, he's very familiar with that tight end, Richard Dixon. He's from Mississippi. They recruited him very hard when he was at Mississippi State, and his father, I guess, was a football player at Mississippi State. Came to LSU and... Uh, Made a big catch right there for the touchdown. And this is the kind of thing that will really show South Carolina what their redshirt freshman quarterback Garcia is all about. He gets the first start. He's played very well. Now he's ready to go into the fourth quarter of a tie game. Not how you play in the first three quarters. It's how you play the fourth in this league. Culliver. Makes a cut, gets across the 20, up to about the 22. Let's check in with Reese.
Interesting that the Brewers are saying they're going to make an offer for CC Sabathia, who will be a free agent. They had it was almost a rent a starter deal yeah. down the stretch. It was thought they could not afford to uh, even be in competition to re-sign him, but apparently he had such a terrific time with the Milwaukee Brewers that he's thinking about it. Uh, LSU was offside, so they will re-kick here. Well, Steve Spurrier hopes because of that to get a little bit better starting field position for his offense than he's had this entire third quarter. It just feels like, I'm sure it feels like to him that he's been playing out of his own end zone the entire quarter. And, of course, that affects his play calling. Yeah, he doesn't sure. want to do anything silly. Well, you, your defense is playing well. You've got a, a, a redshirt quarterback making, a freshman quarterback making his first start. So you want to try to protect him, but you don't want to just sit on the football. So, I mean, it really makes it difficult to call plays when you're backed up inside your own territory all the time. We have still seen no sign of Captain Munnerlin. Presumably in the locker room getting an IV for the cramps. So Culliver is back there to return. And it's taken by one of the up men across the 30 to the 35-yard line. Akeem Augusta, the ball came loose. Was he down, or did they get it back? At least they got it back if it was a fumble. It was a short kick. Looks like he's protecting. It does come Ooh, it out. Is loose. It absolutely is on the ground. And it was another guy that was able to, to fall on it Patrick for South Peterson. Carolina. No, Chris. Uh, Addison Williams, yes. a backup cornerback, in on the uh, kickoff return team and smartly falls on the football. Very, very fortunate for South Carolina. And another player is down, Ron Brooks, a defensive back out of Irving, Texas for LSU. And it's not all that hot. We've seen a lot of cramps. This is obviously not that. Tomorrow afternoon on ABC, the chase for the cup continues. Jeff Burton tries to carry the momentum from his win last week to Martinsville. The chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup at Martinsville tomorrow on ABC. Our coverage begins with NASCAR countdown at 1 o'clock Eastern. Still pretty tight among the top three, at least. Burton and Biffle certainly with legitimate shots at it. I guess this guy, Carl Edwards, is a big Missouri Tiger fan. And, uh, tough night similar, for him. Yeah, tough night for him, and he can't afford another loss like the Tigers. If he wants to stay in the championship yep. hunt, he's got to get a win. Qualifying was rained out. Garcia sets in the pocket, throws, has this complete. That's a good matchup for South Carolina. Jared Cook working on Jai Eugene. 5'11 corner working against 6'5 tight end. That's a, that's a good place for Steven Garcia to go with the football. And quickly back to the line of scrimmage. They have a chance to get off another play. See what Garcia is doing. That's another thing Spurrier likes. He likes that Garcia is competent enough to, to look over, to see for changes in audibles when Steve wants to change the play. He likes when his quarterbacks will do that. And Garcia, not afraid to look over and change the play at all. Davis across midfield, just into LSU territory. As we come to the end of three quarters, we're tied at 17.
One quarter to go from Columbia, South Carolina. We're tied at 17. It has been a good week for some of the members of our ESPN primetime crew. On Tuesday, October 7th, one of our graphic operators, Ben Nelson, and his wife had a baby girl, Kendall Grace. This past Monday, our TD, Dean Peer, and his wife had a baby boy, Jesse Dean. Congratulations to Ben and Dean and their families. Good luck and good health. And down goes Stephen Garcia, Akeem Aleem. From his defensive end spot for the fifth LSU sack of the night. Well, here he is. He's going to come on an inside stunt. Tyson Jackson's going to go outside, and they really mix up the offensive front for South Carolina. Nobody picks him up, and he gets right to the quarterback. He's very quick off the football, but credit Tyson Jackson and his quickness going outside They really set up the inside move for the sack. That really puts him in a hole. Third and 19, and South Carolina has given up 29 sacks, the most in the football bowl subdivision. Garcia pressured, somehow got away. And oh, man, throws on the run, man, wide open, and it's dropped at the 30. They left the receiver when the quarterback scrambled for some reason. Oh. Jai Eugene, the quarterback, left his man. Kenny McKinley falling, couldn't catch it. Garcia looks like he's going to run all the way. At the last minute, he sees McKinley because Eugene had left him and was running towards the quarterback for some unknown reason. Watch Eugene. You never leave your guy there. The quarterback hasn't crossed the line of scrimmage. There's nobody there if McKinley can make this catch. Oh, and it's a tough throw because yeah. he's running to his left. Threw off the wrong foot, but he got it there. And McKinley trying to come back and get it, just couldn't make the catch. Jones is back inside his 15 on the punt. Trying to find the seam, gets back across the 20. Return of seven after a punt of 46. What a game changer that could have been. Hatch and Lee split time at quarterback throughout this season for LSU. And now Lee has been named the starter. They got out quickly, 4-0, ranked as high as number four. And then they were thumped at Florida, 51-21. Their worst loss in six years. The Gators jumped on them early. The defense ranked ninth in the SEC this year. They were third in the entire country a season ago. But right now, it's up to their offense. The way their defense is played in the second half is the way that I expected to see the LSU defense play most of the year because of their talent up front. They've been great in the second half here. Hatch runs the option and keeps it. And buried as he got to the 24. Here's Holly. Well, guys, you know the old saying, if you're using two quarterbacks, that means you don't have one. I really think this LSU team might be the exception to that this year. I've never seen such a seamless back and forth of a two platoon system. We saw Chris Leak and Tim Tebow do it, but that was more in a red zone type package. These guys are doing it anytime within drives, anywhere on the field. They're roommates, they're great friends, and you can just feel this positive dynamic over here. Holly, I think you make a great point as they blow this one dead. Uh, Hatch certainly is the better runner than Lee, and they have a particular package of plays in there for him. The one thing they have to do, though, as we await the, the call here. Prior to the snap, false start, 78 offense, five-yard penalty remains, second down. Joseph Barksdale, the right tackle. You have to break up your tendency some, though, even though, because everybody, including us, knows that Andrew Hatch is the runner when he comes right. in. And so you've got to call some pass plays with him in. And they, and they did got the for the touchdown. touchdown. Now, Jarrett Lee, they may not call design runs when he's in, but it might not be a bad idea, particularly if they get in the red zone. Munnerlin has returned for South Carolina from the locker room and is back on the field. Lee is back at quarterback. Three-man rush. They drop eight. Lee throws on a run just a little bit too high for Bird. Munnerlin was right behind him. The statistics about as even as they could be through three quarters and reflects a 17 all top. It's another pretty good throw by Jarrett Lee. Watch him just flick the ball. I mean, it's a little high, but Demetrius Bird got two hands on it and not able to come down with it. If it that ball just shoots right out of the hand of Jarrett Lee. Couple of pretty good looking redshirt freshman quarterbacks, aren't they? Sure yeah, are. Third down and long. 
Blitz coming. Lee throws over the middle. Tipped it almost intercepted. Travian Robertson, a defensive tackle dropping back on the zone blitz, had a hand on it and couldn't hold it. You're exactly right. Here he is. Now the zone blitz is coming here. and Watch Travian just kind of drift right back, right as he's taught to do. And watch that ball in the middle. Spy the quarterback, and he almost plays it to perfection. Well, that's why he's a defensive lineman. Uh -huh. Captain Munnerlin back at the 40. Pressure coming. They almost got there. Boy, South Carolina put on the rush. Great kick under the circumstances. Goes out of bounds at the 40-yard line. A 41-yard punt. Nearly blocked by Chris Hall, who went as high as he could. But Dolphrey got it out of there. What a ball game. Tied at 17, fourth quarter. Let's remember this time where none of us felt secure and fight for a future where everyone can. Because when the world seems like it's standing still, that's the perfect time for us to change it. They've learned to savor the moments that were always there. And they never tasted this good. It's not just the ships the armor, or the aircraft. It's the will to fight and determination to win found inside every Marine. Battles won. The difficult part for me was starting. I've lost about 20 pounds, which blows my mind. The psychology aspect of Noom was different than I'd ever seen before. Noom helped me make a couple of lifestyle changes that made achieving that goal very easy. Telecast is available in high definition. Brought to you by Pioneer's new Kuro. Welcome back to Columbia, South Carolina. Quite a ball game. 17 all. Steve Spurrier wanting his Gamecocks to get some points. Garcia. Airs it out and wide of Kenny McKinley. Garcia pass. Gary Beck with the middle linebacker has been sitting out lately. The young man who came back from a knee injury last week and they have been trying to keep the fluid out of that knee. Had to drain it earlier this week. Well, they, they really admired his courage last week. Felt he maybe came back a week too early last week. He was injured. September the 13th, and he missed a few games. He wanted to play last week against Florida. He's not back 100% and out of the ball game right now. He is a very talented player. This ball caught at midfield as McKinley goes down. The LSU players contending it was incomplete. Well, this was close to being a trap. It was a low throw. Look at that ball nose down. McKinley got his hands under there. Wow. Well, that's another close one. If the ball touches the ground by rule, it's incomplete. Well, McKinley did an outstanding job. He had both hands together underneath that football. I'm not sure the ball did hit the ground. Well, you don't break Sterling Sharp's record without having great hands and great skills. Tyson Jackson is the player down for LSU. I can't remember a game where so many guys have yeah. been slow to get up. Two very physical football teams. It's not a hot evening. It's very cool out there this evening, but uh, two very physical teams. We've seen some guys with cramps. We've seen some guys with more significant bumps and bruises. Jackson up and able to leave the field under his own steam. Came into the ball game, the team leader with two and a half sacks, added two more tonight. It is a first down for South Carolina, just into LSU territory. Still plenty of time to go in this game, better than 12 minutes. A little option action that time to Mike Davis. He picks up about five. Let's check in with Reese. Second and seven for the 
I tell you, I have always liked the way Rich Brooks yep. coached college, pro, whatever. Big win for Kentucky, and they'll blow this one dead. It looked like it was the right tackle, Justin Sorensen, who moved early. Prior to the snap, false start, 78. Offense, five-yard penalty, second down. Only the second penalty against South Carolina tonight. Holly, what do you have? Well, Tyson Jackson's right shoulder is a problem right now. He's just trying to move that arm around in a windmill-like motion. Just got it stretched out. Looks like he will be able to return to play. Great news for LSU. If he can come back, preseason first team all-SEC defensive end. Second and 12 for Steven Garcia, the redshirt freshman out of Tampa. Throws that crossing pad and Davis let it go through his hand, nearly intercepted. And right down on top of the grass, Perry O'Reilly, number 56, trying to sell the official on the idea that he did pick it, but nobody's buying. Garcia looks a little more rattled here in this second half than he did there in the second quarter. He's not setting his feet quite as much. He's not throwing quite as accurate. That one a little bit behind. Yeah, but as a quarterback, yeah. you've got to have somebody catch that one, yeah. don't you? Yeah, you do. Now third and 12. LSU crowding the line of scrimmage. You've got eight men up there. They cover a lot of them, and Garcia's going to be buried all the way back at the 35. Curtis Taylor and Harry Coleman, safeties, yeah. came right up the guard center gaps, and Garcia didn't have a chance. Yeah, here they are, both of them. They get in, in right there, right in between. They're bringing all out pressure, playing man to man. And they're just saying, we believe we'll get to the quarterback before he can find an open man to throw it to, and they bet right. Mike Davis, the tailback, had a choice. He got yeah. one. You can't get both. Landing to punt to Chad Jones. Signals fair catch and makes it at the 17-yard line. 45-yard kick. No return. LSU will take over. We're still tied at 17. Toast Crunch. Oh. Every square blasted with Cina dust. Let's remember this time where none of us felt secure and fight for a future where everyone can. Because when the world seems like it's standing still, that's the perfect time for us to change it. I always thought it was me, that I was the reason all these diets never worked. This is genuinely not a temporary fix. There's some serious psychology behind it. It's funny how much smarter I feel like new has made me. It, it's the simple things. Once I understood why I was making those choices, it was easy for me to change those habits, and weight loss came naturally after that. I've been on Noom for four months now. I've lost 27 pounds, and I feel like I got my life back. Visit Noom.com and lose the weight for good. ESPN's College Football Primetime is presented by Hampton Hotels. At Hampton, we love having you here. And in part by Taco Bell. Think outside the bus. Welcome back to Columbia, South Carolina. 17-17 in the fourth quarter. We have 10 minutes and 40 seconds to go. Big SEC ball game. LSU lost its first game a week ago. They do not want to make it back-to-back -back losses. South Carolina has already lost two, but they are still in contention, particularly since it looks like their redshirt freshman quarterback, Garcia, has found a home. Jarrett Lee, another redshirt freshman at quarterback for LSU, and throws complete to LaFell. LaFell with a leaping catch out to the 33-yard line. 
been a seesaw ball game. Jared Lee made the big mistake. This pass interception set up a South Carolina touchdown. And Garcia, particularly effective in the first half. Andrew Hatch, who's been alternating in quarterback. He's been the runner tonight, but he came in to throw a pass as they crossed up the South Carolina defense, and that's why we're tied at 17. Keelan Williams. Mullerland slows him up and gets some help. Reaches the 41. The yard to makes the 43. And we go inside 10 minutes. Ran behind big Herman Johnson that time, the left guard. Boy, we had a chance to, to visit with him. And uh, pleasant guy. I mean, just gigantic. Thank I mean, goodness. Just, just, I mean, as, as big a guy as you're ever going to sit in a room with. And he had his hair... You know, his hair was, was long and straight up and made him look even bigger. I mean, he was just huge. Herman, 6'7", 375, at least that's the way he's listed. And he is, uh, his teammates say he's the funniest guy on the team. Well, they'd say that anyway, wouldn't yeah. they? I mean, you wouldn't argue with it. <laughs> he told them to. Lee on the run, throws, has a man wide open, LaFell. The 30, the 25, to the 24. And Brandon LaFell got lost somewhere in the middle of the defense. There is a Typical flag shift. down, though. Offense, two players moving, never got set for one second. Five-yard penalty, second out. But that's coming back. You can't give up big plays like that. Well, you got to have everybody set for at least one second before you snap the ball. And Keelan Williams, the back, was moving before the snap and uh, was not set. A tough break for LSU. They look to the sideline for the play. Lean a shotgun with Keelan Williams with him, and they'll run the option. Williams. See, there's a changeup. That's the option with Jarrett Lee, not Andrew Hatch, and they got very close to another first down. See, you got to change your tendencies. If you're going to play two quarterbacks and one has certain strengths and the other one has others, you've got to change up. Watch Keelan Williams. I think he stepped out of bounds and they missed it. And that's what the crowd is reacting to, to the overhead shot on the scoreboard. Well, LSU would like to get a play snapped here quickly before they have a chance to review it, but they're standing over the ball. They're going to look at it. Oh, yeah. There he is. Now, this is going to be interesting. When you see the replay from behind, the one we showed you, that may be the definitive replay. It looked like he barely stayed in. Still in. Right there is where it's close. That's where I thought he stepped out of bounds, but the angle from behind, this one. He looks in mm. on that one. Sure does. He looks still in on that one. Well, good job by the linesman. Yep. Tim Beard, the line judge right there. Thomas Ritter, our referee tonight. I think he's done a nice job. I actually saw him do something earlier in the game or in the last South Carolina possession that really... Uh, Really impressed me of a guy who's got control of the game and uh, is trying to, to help a young player make a good decision. Uh, something he did with Steven Garcia. Here's a look at the, uh, the foot of Keelan Williams, who is getting a lot more playing time tonight than he had previously. Only 17 carries coming into the ball game tonight. That looked like he was in. I think so. After review, the ruling on the field stands, third down. I just love the college yeah. replay system. I, I, I think it is just about as good as it can conceivably get. It's far superior to the NFL. Third and short. It'll be interesting to see who's in at quarterback. It's Andrew Hatch. Third and short. You've got Charles Scott in at the fullback. I wouldn't be surprised to see him try to throw the ball to Scott out in the flat. He's not normally a fullback. They'll give it to him from the yep. fullback spot, and he dives ahead for the first down. 
up to the 44-yard line. So that gives you options yep. with Scott in there as the short man and Keelan Williams as the tailback. And now Jarrett Lee will come back in the ballgame. I mean, normally Quinn Johnson is the blocking back for Charles Scott. Now they've got Scott in at the fullback, and they're going to just a quick handoff and give it to him. A nice little changeup by Gary Croton, the offensive coordinator. Lee with time intended for Bird, and Bird makes the catch inside the 20. They've run that same pattern three times. They finally hit it. Three times, and two of the three have been perfect throws by Jarrett Lee. And the last time, Demetrius Bird comes down with it. He splits the corner in the safety, and Lee throws it out there for him, and Demetrius Bird... How many times do you see a receiver go up in the air? The, the, the quarterback stays on the ground. The receiver goes up and catches it at the height of his jump and comes down with a big play. Addison Williams did not make much of a play on the ball, never got off his feet to challenge. And it's a first down for LSU at the 20. Keelan Williams, the tailback, he gets the carry. Five, eight, nine yards. Holly, what do you have? Well, guys, Carlos Thomas has been over here on the sideline with cramps. He went into the locker room, apparently got an IV. His backup in there just gave up that big play. The coach, uh, Ron Cooper, the safeties coach, just turned to him and said, are you okay? Can you go in there? And he said, yeah, I can. They haven't put him in yet, but not having him in there, he's really their sturdy guy back there. That's hurt them right now. And here's where you need your best guys at any position. Last seven minutes of the ball game. LSU driving. Second about a yard and a half. Williams again needs to make the 10. He's just shy of it. Marvin Sapp, number 53, who backs up the terrific Eric Norwood at linebacker, made that tackle. You mentioned Carlos Thomas not being in the ball game right now as, as kind of a third corner. Captain Munnerlin not in the ball game either. The one thing I like that LSU has done is the way they've used Charles Scott and Keelan Williams tonight, kind of sharing the carries. They have both been fresh the entire football game. Both guys running hard with the ball. Third and very short. Scott, first down easily inside the five. See, that's a, that's fresh legs. That That's a burst by Charles Scott here with six minutes left in the game that if he had carried the ball 30 times to this point, maybe wouldn't have this burst. But they're splitting carries with he and Keelan Williams, and he hit that hole quickly with a whole head of steam. And Emmanuel Cook got buried as he made the tackle. Clock running under six minutes to go. LSU has eaten up a lot of time, and now they're, if nothing else, in chip shot field goal territory. But they're looking for seven. Yeah, and they're looking to use as much clock as they can yeah. and then stick it in the end zone. Hatch on the option. Nothing this time. Well, that was a nice play by Lottie Ajaboy. Number 91 got penetration in the backfield and really bottled that thing up. He is considered their best down defensive lineman. 6'1", just about 300 pounds, and he got excellent penetration that time. And Andrew Hatch, to his credit, you know, there's an old adage when you're running the option, when in doubt, don't pitch it out. And uh, he didn't. He held on to the football even though they weren't able to gain any yardage. Lee is back in on second and goal. Lee to throw. Middle screen, Keelan Williams. Boy, and South Carolina's defense recovered beautifully. That play looked like it was good for a touchdown. They had three LSU receivers out to the left. They made it look like they were throwing it wide. Again, it was Ajaboy who got in there and just kind of affected the throw a little bit. And then you see the quick pursuit by the South Carolina defense. And these guys can tackle. Yeah, they can. And they like to hit. I mean, they really do. You watch them on film, all of them. Third and goal. All of them like to hit. Drive so far has gone 81 yards. Hatch is back in. Hands to Scott. Touchdown! Boy, did you see how Andrew Hatch 
held that read. I mean, he kept that ball in the back's belly for as long as he possibly could yep. before he pulled his hands out and let him run the football. He made it look like it could be a quarterback run real long. Watch, ride it, ride it, and then at the last minute, leave it in the belly and let Charles Scott run it into the end zone. That, that little move by the quarterback helped to freeze the defense just a hair. And let me go back to Holly Rowe's earlier point. This has been a seamless alternation of quarterbacks. It was a great point she made from down there. When hatches come in, I mean, they haven't had any delay of game no. penalties. They haven't lost any momentum. Nobody has come in and made any center to quarterback exchange problems. Nothing. They have played very, very well with two quarters. Let's take a look at the ESPNU All-State Standings Review. It's not like last week when everybody was getting knocked off. You see only number nine, Brigham Young, was a loser this week to TCU. The BCS standings, the first one comes out yep. tomorrow, and it will more than likely reflect Texas, Alabama, Penn State, one, two, three. And you know what's interesting? The last time Texas, Alabama, and Penn State were simultaneously ranked in the top five was the preseason poll of 1979. That's that amazing. Long. It is. Captain Munnerlich. Up to the 33-yard line. They will start from there. There's plenty of time for South Carolina. They have all three timeouts and 4-10 to go. So they can run anything on offense they want. They can afford to be very patient. But they do need a touchdown. Look at the yardage for South Carolina in the second half. Only 42 yards. Part of that is... Uh, their inability to run the football with any kind of success, and then LSU's defense really turned it up in the second half, and they played much differently than they did the first half. The last 16 yards, South Carolina's gained only 11. Oh, what a shot. Mike Davis is just creamed by Kelvin Shepard. But it starts with the pressure up front. I mean, the pressure, the pocket collapsed so quickly on Steven Garcia, the rush by Abdallah, and they're right oh. there. Alim in with the, the pressure. Tyson Jackson getting after the quarterback. It's an incomplete pass, so it's second and ten. It was fortunate he didn't catch it. They would have lost four. Now they're going to blow this play dead. There was movement up front. Who won? Dead ball. Snap infraction on the offense. Five-yard penalty in main second down. It's on the center, Garrett Anderson. You see the frustration on Steve Spurrier's face. And see, right now for LSU, I mean, this is really hard for South Carolina because LSU knows, number one, we've got a touchdown lead. Number two, South Carolina has no threat to run the football, so we are going to really rush the quarterback with our front four. Exactly. Garcia hangs in the pocket, intercepted, picked off by Curtis Taylor, who jumped the route 
And Todd, just as you said, there's no threat of a running game. You sit back there. If you pick the right route, you can jump it. And he did. You rush four, so you don't worry about blitzing because you're confident your four can get pressure. And then you play zone, and you have all these guys keeping their eyes right on the quarterback. And that's exactly what happened here. Watch Curtis Taylor. Watch the quarterback. He sees his eyes. He sees he wants to go at the ball. And he steps right in front of the intended re receiver, Jason Barnes. When you can get pressure with your front four, it allows you to play defense with seven in the back end, and you can really do a lot of different things. Since Garcia was hit hard and shaken up, they've run 18 plays. They only had 11 yards and two turnovers since then. And now Keelan Williams breaks it straight up the middle for 11. LSU trying to salt it away. South Carolina has to stand tall on defense now and use those timeouts to stop the clock. Let's go to Holly. Well, Todd, you're talking about that pressure that LSU's defensive line was able to get on. They have a major league speed package in on that play. They've moved their defensive end Tyson Jackson into tackle. They've got Tremaine Johnson, another defensive end, also in at tackle. They had three defensive ends in there playing that four-man front. Boy, that was a lot of yeah. speed on the field. Well, they have really turned it up in the second half, Holly. And I'll tell you what, these two defensive coordinators, Doug Mallory and Bradley Dale Pivoto, both took some heat this week. They gave up 51 to Florida last week. And uh, they, they looked slow. They looked confused. They looked out of sync at times. And, uh, and they looked a little bit that way in the first part of this ball game, But in the second half, they have been dominant. The way that... Uh, the way that the LSU team looked defensively last year, dominant, making yes. big plays, pressuring the quarterback, forcing turnovers. And I think once they made up their mind that none of the South Carolina running backs yeah. was going to hurt them, that they could really take a beat on Garcia. Yeah. Well, and not only that, the only guy that was going to hurt them running it was Garcia. Right. And, and once they kind of got a better feel for how he ran and when he liked to leave the pocket, they just really shut him down, made him one-dimensional the rest of the game. Using every second here, and Keelan Williams will dive toward the 20. Oh! That's a first down. Mm -hmm. now, with the 40-second play clock, without timeouts, 220 is what you can take off the clock. And Steve Spurrier is going to have to burn them all on defense and hope for something good to happen, perhaps a miss or blocked field goal. Toast Crunch. Oh. Every square blasted with Cinnadust. Let's remember this time where none of us felt secure and fight for a future where everyone can. Because when the world seems like it's standing still, that's the perfect time for us to change it. For a while, it have had like a kind of negative self-image. There's like this contrast between like the way that I was thinking about my personality and the way that I was thinking about my body. With Noom, I was able to learn how to interrupt those habits and create new ones. So my goal was 35 pounds and I'm, I've lost about 30 pounds now. So I've never been this confident in my body. My name is Sarah and I changed my life with Noom. Visit Noom.com and lose the weight for good. This isn't the shake up at the BCS. Doubt it. Do or die for Boston and the Cowboys. Talk Romo. Better than talking Tio. Yeah. Had just or about Ocho. enough. Tio or yeah. Ocho? I no. <laughs> I, I can go for Ocho. Tio, I've just had enough. <laughs> enough is enough. South Carolina with two timeouts left, and they're going to have to use them on defense. They found something in the middle there with Scott. He's been able to lower that shoulder and burrow for five, six, seven, eight yards every time he's touched it in the fourth quarter. Here's tonight's photo album from Columbia, South Carolina. Some of the images we've captured.
quite a comeback for LSU, actually. Yeah. It looked like South Carolina had uh, all the momentum, everything going for it, including uh, a big home crowd. But LSU has stood up. And now with only one timeout left, South Carolina will only be able to stop it after this uh, after this play. And LSU is remaining scheduled Georgia next week. Then Tulane, number two, Alabama against LSU. That'll be a good one. Then Troy, Ole Miss, and Arkansas. So LSU still has a chance to rack up a great record this year. Hatch is back in. Second down, call it six. Got the fullback, Keelan Williams has it at the tailback spot. And he's got a first down, and that's going to do it. I, I tell you, I think this has been one of the key things that LSU has done tonight. The seamless transition between the two quarterbacks and the seamless transition and utilizing it both on the field at the same time mm -hmm. of Charles Scott and Keelan Williams. For Keelan Williams, that was his 12th carry of the ball game. Charles Scott has had 16 carries. They have really shared the, the load at the running back position tonight, and both guys running very fresh and hard all the way to the end of the football game. Say that your running play only takes five or six seconds. You then get to 40-second clock, so that's a minimum of 45 seconds. A couple of downs, it's a minute and a half. Three downs, it's 2.15. Well, Les Miles, it looks, is going to do it again. I mean, uh, LSU under Les Miles was 6-0 and after a loss coming into tonight's ball game. It looks like they are going to move that to 7-0. Well, one of the keys to that is there haven't been very many losses. Yeah. I mean, he will be 39-7 and yeah. if they hold on to win this game. Now, that's, that's a pretty good record. This week on Monday Night Football, it's the Broncos with that high-powered offense against the New England Patriots who are hanging on by their fingernails. Monday Night Football on ESPN at 8.30. Coverage begins at 7 Eastern with Monday Night Countdown delivered by UPS. With that coaching staff in New England, if anybody can do it under these circumstances, it's them. But it's very, very hard to lose a brilliant player who's your quarterback, your leader, and everything else and still have success. Well, for Steve Spurrier, how about this? They've played, this is the fifth SEC game they've played this year, right? The first four have all been decided by seven points. Two wins and two losses. And we're at seven points right now. Now, this one could go up. But the bottom line is, you know, they have been so competitive and been in every ball yep. game. But uh, just... Took, I think they took a step forward tonight with Garcia. It got yeah. a little bit tar harder there at the end of the ball game, but uh, and a lot of that credit goes to LSU and their defense. I mean, they they really stepped up in the second half and made things very uncomfortable for Steven Garcia. Well, these kind of losses will just tear your heart out. I know. Yeah, they, they do. I almost would rather get whipped than, uh, than figure out how to win a game or lose a game by seven points. Exactly. And they don't want to let Keelan Williams in there. That shows something from that South Carolina defense. It's still not going to give up. And now we're under 50 seconds. And South Carolina hanging on to that one timeout. 11 of those 18 losses under the old ball coach by seven points or less. And part of that, he's had to rebuild this program, and that makes it tougher to win those close games, or any game for that matter. Here's what they have left. Tennessee, Arkansas, at fifth-ranked Florida, and Clemson. So this was a huge game for them. They could have gone to 6-2 and two if they had won this ball game and maybe looking at a nine-win season. Well, and they, they still have to get better offensively. I mean, that, that's yep. the thing. I mean, defensively, it appears that they, uh, you know, they're legit right now this year. They, they really have a solid defense. They've got a good, promising young quarterback, but they don't have much of a running game. And, uh, you know, until they get better balance running and passing, that's the thing you think about Steve Spurrier. You, you think of his days at Florida, and you think, oh, he loved to throw the football and a few touchdown passes. Yes, they did, but they were a well-balanced football team. Yes, they were. 
And they had NFL-type receivers and NFL-type running backs uh, to go with quarterbacks that really could put the ball where they needed it to be. They, they still need to, to make major improvement offensively here uh, to get where they want to be. South Carolina has gained only 42 yards in the second half. 48 seconds to go. The Gamecocks have used their last timeout. Keelan Williams goes to the one. Now when they mark it ready for play, the 40-second clock starts, and it looks like there is a one-second difference. So they are going to have to snap the ball, but that's all they have to do. Snap it and take a knee, and the game is over. Well, a tough loss for South Carolina, a very gritty win for LSU. After a 30-point blowout in Gainesville last week, they went back to fundamentals. And they come on the road again and get a W. And now they go home for a what, what will size up to be a very big game against Georgia next yes, week. Georgia's starting to play better after their difficult loss at home to Alabama a few weeks ago. Georgia, of course, was number one in the preseason polls. They'll put two seconds back on the game clock, and all LSU has to do is avoid a disaster on the snap to preserve this victory. And Les Miles will rack up another win on the road, and they get... A nice comeback from that 30-point loss a week ago that stunned them against the University of Florida when the Gators jumped on them so quickly that it certainly took them out of their offense and much of a chance to respond. And Hatch takes a long time to take a knee, but eventually does, and LSU will get out of Columbia, South Carolina with a hard-fought victory. South Carolina will go home disappointed with the loss, but LSU and Les Miles, Holly will be able to take home this victory. Well, Coach, you guys were down by seven at the half, and Garcia had been effective running and throwing the football. What changed for you defensively that turned that around? A couple small adjustments didn't allow him to get to the perimeter. You know, we, we really talked about our rush lanes, but yet we still came after him. We came up the center when, when he passed. Both quarterbacks really working in tandem tonight. How would you describe the effectiveness of both of your quarterbacks? Well, you know, sometimes we've made a couple of mistakes. I'd like to have those, those, those plays back. But I think uh, both guys showed poise and, and, and played well. I think I'm really pleased with how Hatch managed the back end of the game. Both of your running backs, too, Keelan Williams and Charles Scott, very effective tonight. Also another one-two punch there. What would you describe their performance? Well, timely. It's what we needed. You know, we needed guys to step in there and make big plays. All right. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Al. Big game in the SEC. LSU pulls it off on the road. The final score, number 13 LSU, 24. South Carolina, 17. Coming up next on ESPN. Stay tuned for Sports Center And for a wrap-up of this game, catch us on ESPN News in just a few minutes. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Our thanks to Ken Dennis, who directed tonight's ball game. For Todd Blackledge, Holly Rowe, and our entire ESPN crew, this is Mike Patrick. Good night from Columbia. Outside, it's a quiet night on the plains of central Oklahoma. But step inside Gallagher-Iba Arena, one of the noisiest and toughest places to play in the country.